It's Tabletop Time. I'm Jen. I'm Dave. I'm Jazza. I'm new here. I'm also Lachlan. <laughs> <laughs> and we're very excited because I finally get to play some 40k roleplay. Oh, yeah, uh, we do. This the second time on the channel, first time on the new one? The... For 40k, oh, for yes, we did Battlefleet Gothic, yeah. uh, but that was a long time ago. I've been begging for 40k constantly, uh, and we do a lot of patron voted one shots, and our lovely patrons uh, seem to vote for other things. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just running a 40k one shot because yeah. we're going to be tying this into our kill team game. Yay. So oh, this yay. outside this room, Dave and Jen and Murray have been working on a kill team board which will be basically a representation of the world we're playing in this is a prequel to the kill team board not so a prequel to the kill team game yeah. it's a prequel to the setting <laughs> for the kill team game love this it. is so oh. exciting like this is the the interconnected oh. way we can mix everything we love about our hobby and make it all a big moment so exciting yeah extremely pumped I see where this is going and I'm no longer confident in my character's life expectancy <laughs> <laughs> well look I, uh, there are no preconceptions about yeah don't get attached there uh, is definitely a preconception about the end state of the situation that we'll, we'll, we'll get to that point and I know we'll end up in that point but there's no preconception on how well you do how well if things we turn survive, out if yeah. you survive if you don't even you can have positive or negative impacts on the world of mm. course but regardless, the the place is going to be as it is when, for, for reasons. That being said, I hold the record for the most alive characters. <laughs> you do. Do you? You've only died like twice ever. Because Declan stayed alive. For Declan the, isn't dead. Yep. From yeah. the 40k one yeah. shot. Yep. Confirmed. And there's a couple of others as well that have survived um, in the you, Adonis characters. You, Am I the most dead? I think so. <laughs> yeah, you I think you and Rob are probably on par. You, you, <laughs> Rob's you had a few. You did die in the yeah. uh, Resident Evil one shot, I believe. Or yeah, turned. no, I did die. Yeah, she yeah. did. Uh, she turned into a zombie. So, yep. Confirmed for off screen death. Yeah, I'm still, still running. <laughs> is that I, who else you know, have you got this time? Sorry, this is off topic. I re listened to Seraphim. I'm like. I had it out for Gabe. I'm like, he, he is not dead. I'm so yeah, sorry. He is so not dead. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this is awful. And I'm like, Look, it's been the largest friend. I'm not dead. It's been, it's been long enough that I can now say it was really funny because at the time I, I just was like, go with the DM. Yeah. But I, you were like, you're going to fall and you're going to take like a level three injury. And I'm like, can I like make an acrobatics check to, to like try and make that better? And then I made the acrobatics check. And it it was wasn't a, great. But it wasn't. But then you were like, he's dead now. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I did a I listened back and on my neck. neck. It was my first time back narrating after a yeah. long time. I was like going for dramatic story. But I, I've I've got to redeem that one day. I'm just putting that out there. I am so sorry. You took it like a champ. Oh, you gotta go with the damn. But I was kind of like, uh, okay. So I'm oh, I'm nice. open to there being some karma in this chapter, is what I'm saying. I okay. Guess. All right. Well, it's, I I want to enjoy um, the power not going out in a 40k one shot, so we won't have the power going. Okay. Out. Are we ready? Let's yeah. do it. Welcome everyone. Uh, we are on the planet. Atov PC9, located in the Ultima Segmentum of Imperial Space. The year is M41998, according to the current chronometers. Atov PC9 is an icy hellhole. The system was lost to the Imperium due to warp storms concealing it for thousands of years but when imperium nihilus tore a great rift between the galaxy a a chasming hole into hell that has thrown half of the galaxy into turmoil desperation and cut them off from the imperium proper and holy terror and the astronomicon warp storms went into flux there was kind of like a big ripple that exploded across space and some storms that had been for thousands of years dissipated but in the most part more were created or shifted but in the bargain one system happened to have been revealed that has been hidden for a long time and that is the system of atov pc9 is the designation of uh, you're actually on a moon it's not a planet but okay. it's the ninth moon of a gas giant cool um okay. and you that there has been an expedition here that has lasted for about 10 years you're in the 10th year now this system uh, is on the eastern fringe of the galaxy. Uh, it's on the edge of what would be ultramarine space, and it's actually near a place called the Damocles Gulf. <clears throat> um, a bit, bit far away from that, but it's in that area of space. Now, 
For 10 years, a mining operation has been on this planet trying to mine up the most valuable thing the Imperium can find, which is technology. For there is evidence of an Imperial or human culture, a proto-culture on this planet that has been there for thousands of years. Um, the operation has largely been to excavate it from rock and ice, but over 10 years, the resources have dwindled. The Imperium has deemed it lower and lower priority as no finds of any technological value have come up. In fact, at this 10th year, most of the planet has been turned over to strip mining for the Imperial War Machine as there are some raw me rare metals and materials on the world that are worth claiming for the War Machine. There is no longer much faith that there is any technological um, benefit. However... Not one to abandon all sense of exploration. Uh, you are members, our players are members of one of the last expeditionary arms that are in one of the northern poles of the planet, digging out a city that has currently been unexplored and trying to find that technology. Um, you don't know the name of the city, of course, because it is an ancient city. Um, and the base you've been operating out of for the better part of six months is simply known to you as home. Now, we'll open our session in an icy tunnel. Dust falls from old debris frozen into the roof. The stonework and pillars of this civilization that you would put at a Middle Ages level of technology is twisted and bowed with the glacial shifting of the ice. And some of the ceilings and structures are warped impossibly. Uh, if the ice was frozen, they would fall. But of course, being frozen into glacier, they've kind of broken and shifted so that you have these weird like bent columns at sideways with the roof shifted with the glacier that still is solid where you've mined out between them. And we open with Bron. Bron, how would you describe yourself as you uh, set a charge in this corridor? I'm Bron. I describe myself as, uh, well, a space marine. <clears throat> Should have been at least. Uh, my favourite colour's blue and I wear it at every opportunity. Because uh, I'm an ultramarine at art. Gilliman just missed a boat with me. Um, in uh, Out of character, Bron is a large... All brawn, no brain. <laughs> um, bald and very uh, muscular um, excavationist. He's a demolitions expert. He's been doing this his whole life. Uh, when he was a child, he always dreamed of, of joining the Ultramarines, becoming a space marine. And he actually had a childhood friend that he was somewhat associated with who became one, but he missed out. So all his life he's sort of resented that and felt both sort of pining after and, and desperately like admiring the space marines as gods and and uh wished he could be one but also deep down really resents them really feels like they they think they're better than us and you like if he really dug deep that's where he'd get but he believes and acts in such a way that he loves them and really is one at heart but he'll respect them and it's uh, you know it's, it's just a lot of there's a lot of bitterness there He's very, he's very large. He wears a lot of blue overalls and sort of a lot of mechanical sort of stuff. He's got a big bag with some sort of metal pouches with different explosives. Um, and he carries around what looks like to the layperson a machete, like a large sort of, well, a large, large knife or a small like sword, uh, which is a space marine dagger that his childhood friend, it was sort of broken, but one day on the march passing, I guess he must have been recognised and it was going to be thrown in the fire anyway, so he just threw it to the side as the only point of recognition that he's ever had with that person he grew up with. Um, but he treasures it as his connection to the space marines, that thing that connects him to what he wished he could become. Mm. So he's got this really damaged space marine pear knife. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> Are you going to stare at that knife all day? Are you going to do some work, Bron? A bald rattling who's standing in the corner, hands on his hips, uh, leaning against a crawl space he's just finished wiring explosives at, uh, leans back at you and kind of mo mocks you. You're friends. You've been, you've been known each other for some time. All right, all right, Curly. Just don't get too jealous because you know I could be one and you couldn't. Of course, they don't take a little bastard like me into the ranks of the Space Marines. 
No. And they almost took a bastard like me. <laughs> oh, yes, of course they did. I revere you like uh, the Emperor's own. Now, anyway, come on, get back to work later. Yeah, 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 all right. All right, so you... Go ahead about mm-hmm. my work. I get my shit done, and even though I wish I was uh, slaying Xenos and, and fighting orcs, uh, I instead am blowing up stuff for the Emperor. Did you hear they're going to pull us out of here? So what? Where are, this is the last digs. If they don't find something, they're going to pull us out of here. We're wrapping up then? Soon, within a month. Does that mean reassignment? It does, and I don't like the sound of it. I might see if I can weasel out of it. Oh, I wonder if they're looking for more combatants, eh? Uh, if you want to be conscripted into the militia, go, go for it. I'm going to stay doing my work with the mines if I can. I wonder if... I wonder if they'd change their rules a little and, you know, take someone a little bit more grown up in their space marine. So. <laughs> Make a general knowledge check. <laughs> Challenge level three for the Imperium. Okay. I'll have two. Two for the Imperium. You're on. Ooh, you're from I, the Ultramarine segment. Yeah, so I got three. In your heart of hearts, you know that once you have reached the age of about... Well, basically, once you hit puberty, you can never be a space marine. It just can't happen. They will never recruit. The Ultramarines especially will never mm-hmm. recruit an adult. Never happen. I'm just living an alternate reality in my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, all right, so you plan your charge, and I'm going to get you make an explosives check, challenge level three. Let's do it. With your vocation. Cool. One, two, three, four. Cool. So you finish priming your charges. Yeah. And as you sort of walk down this lean-to corridor lit with imperial lamps and a couple of people scurry out of the way and they realise the look that you have, that, like, it's time to press the explosive detonator, um, your friend Curly keeps talking to you and he says, um, <clears throat> did you hear what they found in the other tunnels? They found something, did they? A big, uh, is strange, the eyes. It's almost got a bit of a, a taint to it. It's darker. It's, str- it's not like frozen water. It's, um, it's got a, a streak of darkness running through it. Ah, uh, well, after all this bloody time, it's about time we hit a honey pot. Uh, I don't know about honey. It, it flows like Ica when... <sighs> anyway, you'll see. We're boring right towards it now. Great. About time for some action, eh? And as you head out, you may place the detonator. How and you may detonate once you get to the safe zone. How does your character respond to detonating? It's uh, play it out. It's the moment of. It's, do you know what I, I'd say? The reason he was drawn to explosives and all this stuff is like this little connection he has to like a bolter. This is his holy action where he can press a button and the <laughs> off in the distance. It's like he feels like he's holding the emperor's own arm and charges it and it it gives him that sense of you know destiny so he charges off an explosion all right showtime for the emperor Snow and dust pelts down and there is a uh, a shaking of the earth that makes you feel for a moment unsettled as Victor stands in a room with an array of minerals on a tray in the ice in front of you. All right, let's see if there's any sink reverse vial here. Something will surely not say is. A man you know as, uh, as Cameron uh, walks in iron shackles holding his ankles together and his wrists together so they can't spread more than a meter he brings another tray of resources and then he kind of slumps lazily and like leans against the table for a moment as he drops them off thank you is he working you too hard again uh, yes my lord uh, you won't tell will you I just need a moment. Take all the time you need, but uh, not too long, otherwise they might get suspicious. Do not take all the time you need. And you hear a crack of a stun baton activating, and you turn your head. Standing in front of you is um, Zuikova, Zuikova Pelia, one of the few and only guards that is stationed with this uh, group. She oversees the dozen or so penal servants who are here uh, serving their life sentences for minor crimes across the galaxy. They will work in these mines or mines like them until they die, and they die frequently and are replaced. Um, 
They are here for crimes such as stealing food to feed their family, etc., and they are rewarded with lifelong penal service for their pious uh, begging for forgiveness. Otherwise, they would have been likely lobotomized and turned into servitors. Um, but uh, Zuikova wears a high-collared fur coat with an ushanka. She has locks of blonde hair going down to her shoulder, flowing freely over the top. And underneath, you can see an ex-service issue Cadian flak jacket. But you know she was never a Cadian military member. Um, she has a shock baton hanging from her hip, but she's currently holding it, and a hip-mounted power pack attached to a hotshot last pistol. You know from your time you've spent years here um, that she names her bat. She calls her baton the motivator, and her pistol rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Love it. And as uh, as Cameron stands up for a moment, like looking like he's going to quickly get back into work. He isn't given the opportunity. And Zuikova steps in in a flurry of movement and cracks the shock baton directly against his side. A pulse of electricity barks through him and he drops the ground, shaking and convulsing in agony. It is set to a setting that is designed to inflict as much pain as possible. Then she says, get back to work and spits on him on the ground. See, when I said take all the time you need, I meant take all the time you could. You took too long. (laughs) <laughs> it's like good no save, good save. <laughs> just it's like no emotion just like not even lying he's just like yeah love it like take a minute to breathe because i don't really care i'm focusing on the minerals and he's got like this sort of like like mm. the clockmaker thing where it's got like all little different lenses but they're on like robotic arms and there's what does victor look like describe uh, his like got sort outfit of like sort of shaggy hair he's probably like 60s but he looks a bit younger than he should because he did like one treatment when he was mm. Like made one good discovery that he almost got credit for, but like <laughs> that one time. he's got like a a thick, like white grey like mustache and one of those sort of like picturing um what's his name from Lord of the Rings the um the old king dude yeah the, the one who's on the throne who was corrupted or yeah yeah him so okay. sort of like his where it's sort of like cool. that, that shape sort there but it's like sort of like yeah. grey and bushy like that and sort of like almost almost like a trench coat yeah. sort of thing. The Rohan King. Is that yeah, the, yeah okay, cool. So, so Theoden. Theoden. Thank you. So like almost like, like that sort of thing and then like yeah. but with like shaggy hair and probably thick whitey grey bushy eyebrows and like a like a trench coat and then like this weird like it's not like a full helmet it's like it goes over like one side of his head and is almost like clamped on with all these robotic fingers that have like the different lenses on it Love it's it. clearly of mechanicus make it would be expensive yeah. um she leans into you and and quietly says um actually she says this loudly why would she say it quietly <laughs> she says um <clears throat> careful victor you don't want to give them too much you give them a meal and they take a mile isn't that why you're here to make sure that when they try to take a mile, they lose a mile? <laughs> I can't be everywhere at once, Victor. So it is fair enough. Plus, if I give him one second to breathe, maybe he does not try to pocket something that he might think of import if he thinks he can get away with it. I mean, he's probably not that stupid, but you never know. <laughs> Good. As long as you're aware of them, they are subhuman and they will do anything. So, stay on your guard. Always. Oh, uh... Your friend, Benomol, is coming to see you. Yeah. And then she yeah. turns and walks out. Does, mm. he, does he know who that is? Benomol Yal is the Magos Explorator who runs this expedition. Oh, well, in which case he's responsible being, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you have a tray of fresh minerals in front of you, and Let's I would I like you to make a him. mineral check, challenge level four, on examining them. So that is base three plus int plus skill ranks. Yep. No thing from the And you get plus one from your visor, your goggle. A square you could write the roll number in so yep. you don't have to do maths every so time. So that is... Cogent, uh, as, the, as, as the co-founder of Cogent, I made it as uh, mild on maths as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate that. <laughs> That's seven. Beautiful. What was the challenge? Two, three, four, five. It was, it was four. challenge level four. Excellent. You ex- is... More makeup. You examine, <laughs> you examine the um, the mineral sample in front of you. This is a fresh pull from a fresh area of the base, and as your senses get to work, and also you defrost it, you've got tools and a tray. You got a full scientific getup. Mm-hmm. The mineral gets softer, and you realize with that roll that it is 
a semi heavily frozen and semi sort of fossilized or or decayed organic matter that was streaking through the ice. Organ oh, I have an idea what this might be out of character. Can I make a general knowledge check to see if Sure. Victor knows? General knowledge for what it actually is or is what probably it could challenge level six. Indicate. Oh that's yeah, I mean, you can roll. Destiny point. Oh, you, you advantage. You can. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you Would you like can. to? You, okay, so you get four successes. Now that is a very you good. You still have to remove check. the destiny point though, because yep. you did say um, that before you rolled. And that four <laughs> four is enough to let you know that um, it's definitely not native for flora or fauna. This is but you you have vaguely heard tell of this, but you don't really know. The thing with the Imperium that sucks is they burn all information and no one knows anything and they deliberately contain that. Yep. So um, This is very unusual. What is unusual? Stands up, straightens himself, straightens the jacket. There is a chittering of multiple... Uh, limbs skittering into the room uh, as as a conveyor of dozens of little clawed feet drags in what was once a human female but is now a fairly augmented tech priest um however you know that benomalyal the explorator is a fairly low-ranking tech priest who hates this assignment because they seem by pure luck to manage to dodge every assignment that actually finds anything that would get them any value or promotion or advancement. Mm. Um, and she resents it, but she perks up slightly as she hears, or as she walks over to you. There, there's like almost this transformation in Victor where he goes from being like this, yeah, whatever, I'm on this crappy assignment to like when the Magus walks in just zoom like teacher's pet sort of transformation. <laughs> I have found something organic in the ice. That vein of almost all looking thing in the ice is organic, semi-organic. And also, your unaugmented senses are certain that it is not remnants of our unfortunate servants. I am certain this is from deeper within the ice where surface co uh, contaminant could not get in. And from what I can see, it matches nothing that I know of. Nothing on this planet. This could be a great find. What could be a terrible find? Surrender your findings to me via data burst. He you can transfer. It's basically so. like digitally transferring data. He, he does. He's got the thing there, so he just does that. It's like his pleasure. <clears throat> Secretly thinking. Ask his thing. <laughs> I will study this at length. You have performed your services acceptably. And then she turns and chitters out of the room without chastisement, which is unusual. Uh, Benomal will usually basically dig on everyone at this dig as being like sub-intelligent monkey people yeah. compared to her. Sorry, just a uh, tangent. Uh, you said ass kissing, is that right? Yes. Uh, I heard ass kissing, like a German word. Ass <laughs> <laughs> uh, kissing. It's, it's, it sort of works perfectly well. Yeah. Anyway. It's not a German word. Or maybe it is. I have no idea. Anyways, I digress. <laughs> All right. So the first time that the, those areas were uncovered uh, was probably a few weeks or months ago. And we're now going to cut across the facility to Sister Hospitaler, who is currently with a mining servant who has managed to hide their pregnancy for a long time and they're actually giving birth and you are attending this birth mm -hmm. and um yeah it's that they shouldn't be usually that would not be allowed but yeah. they've managed to hide it while they've been working the mines and um it's premature and we won't go through the actual role play of you delivering a child but we'll get to the you you they you know you assist that process do you want me to i'm going to get you to roll yeah. a medical check uh challenge level two Five. Five. Nice. All right. So we we arrive at your room. A boom, earth shake dust comes down. <laughs> a detonation happens somewhere. And you find yourself looking down at a newly delivered 
child. This is unheard of. It's such a terrible place to bring a child. Why? The woman looks up and says, Is... is are they... Are they well? Are they healthy? I put the baby in her arms and I say, Yes. All right. He is perfectly fine, but uh, you're you, going to have to do something. Okay. At this stage, you say yes, mm. but you haven't inspected the child yet. So I'd like you to mm. inspect the child. So medics or general survival? Eyes. Just look at them. You oh. pull them out. <laughs> okay. I look at the child. You, you sort of have got, you've got them in rugs and stuff and you lift a small portion of the rug and you see their hand is two claws. Their arm, a carapace-like skin that blends with human flesh. Their head has protruded ridge lines on the front of it. They're a mutant at best. Yep. I redact what I said. <laughs> I'm going to cover the baby back up. Mm-hmm. And say, I'm going to get you to make a mm-hmm. general knowledge. Yeah, general knowledge. Oh, but this is still be challenge level six for general knowledge. Yeah, I'll you can make it. a general knowledge yeah. Yeah, challenge level six. You only get six dice, so it's going to be. I'm going to use a destiny <laughs> to give advantage. Yep. One, two, you get three, four successes four. as well. Great. You know that that is not good. It would have been two, so it's better. Uh, and I'm going to. You can. I'm going to say though, you can assist. Post retroactively with your uh, sisters at battle Medicaid knowledge. Okay. Mm. If you'd like to. Sure. Why not? So how many dice do you get? Is that seven for Medicare? Yep. So you can. So if you get a level two victory on your you'll assist, get the six. Yeah. I'm willing to give you that because you have access to more specialized knowledge. Mm. But it has to be five successes for that yeah, to work. So yeah. So it's probably not going to matter, but. Oh! You get five successes. Oh! Holy North shit! Hell yeah! Okay. All yes. right. Five. That's a. It's not often that an assist is so freaking effective. Hey. All right. So <laughs> you glance down, really and training, uh, training kicks in, and the knowledge kicks in, and you remember a lesson. Usually, this knowledge is forbidden, but you are a member of the Order's Hospitaller, and in a in a frontier world, you have training to detect and and recognize things. And you immediately recognize that that is not a mutant, that is not chaos touched, but that is a xeno human hybrid, and it is an abhuman of an unacceptable level in the Imperium. Yep. There is only one thing that needs to be done. Yep. I wrap the baby back up and uh, I turn to the woman uh, and say, unfortunately, your fetus has suffered implications. They have not survived. Um, I'm going to get you to roll a a destiny check related to your religion. A 20 is a positive outcome for her. Mm -hmm. A one is a negative outcome. For the woman or for For me? For both. Okay. For both. A five. Oh, it wouldn't be 40K if it were happy. (laughs) (laughs) So, your immediate compulsion... Your compulsion. Now, this isn't saying your character has to do it, but every part of your your pious training tells you that you need to execute both right now. Like this both. is yep. both yep. mother and child yep. need to be shot. Yep. Now, I'm not saying your character is the sort of person who'd want to do that, but if you don't do it, you're definitely going to be compelled. Again, you don't have to do it, but your training is telling you, every inch of you is telling you that either you need to, or you need to get the guard, or you need to get Benomal Yarl. You need to get someone of authority or do it yourself because this is an unacceptable situation. Okay, is anyone in the room with me aside from her? Uh, there's probably the a couple of people, a couple of miners, but um, and but no one, no one would know what you. Know. No one knows what you know. Okay. I tell her that what I said before. Her baby hasn't survived. Mm-hmm. Does she respond? Yes, yeah, she immediately like a guttural, deep, horrifying mm-hmm. um, explosion of yeah sadness just pours out I, of her. I'm going to hand the baby off to someone else that's mm-hmm. just standing there and make sure that the wrap is kind of kept really tight because as far as they're aware, it's not alive. I'm going to administer her with um, like a poison or something that's basically going to kill her because I think that, yeah, this is against everything that... I'm assuming you'll be coaching her into like this, uh, this will help hey, Let's do it. Yeah. So yeah. she's sobbing. What do you do? Yeah, so I start preparing it 
a sedative and say, like, you have suffered as well. This was not a normal birth. I'm, I'm going to have to give you something just to help relax. Cool. And make, the make a persuasion check. Challenge level three. She's distraught, but she's... Is it a persuasion or a deception? Just saying. Sorry, Jen. Jen's like, uh, do you have more dice in persuasion? It's oh, both. I'm so sorry. It's gonna, it's going to be both. Okay. So you make the persuasion check. Challenge level three. Yep. Uh, four. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll make deception. an opposed deception check. Um, so the persuasion oh. is just to administer medication to someone. The deception mm-hmm. is what is the medication. Gotcha. Um, so she is going to have base three. So you're challenging nothing. So you just have to have a success. As long as you get a success, you will deceive. So with deception? With whatever your deception is. Which is your base three. You got one. Two two successes. Nice. Um, And then I'm going to get you... And then (laughs) to continue the torrent of dice rolls, I'm going to get you... you Because you've got one in intelligence. Wait, no. Yeah, so it's intelligence. No with deception? Is yeah. your oh, no, it is. You're right. It is four. doesn't matter. You pass. I'm going to get you to make a Medicaid check, a medical check, to see how successfully you've concocted this. This is a torrent of checks, but it's important. Uh, two, two, three. three I was going to say challenge level is three skilled. So, um, yeah, she is sobbing, but she seems um, desirous of the medicine um, to help her calm. Mm-hmm. And as you inject it, it flows into her shortly after. Um, she sort of starts to get a bit limp, limp and numb as you inject a massive amount of sedative into yeah. her. I'm going to just And sing. then she passes out. Yeah, I'll just sing a hymn while she's passing just to calm mm-hmm. her to make sure she passes peacefully. I'm going to roll Destiny roll. Uh, we get a seven. <laughs> it was almost a one. <laughs> yeah. She passes. So yeah. Right. Her eyes are flittering as she's about to fall She'll fall unconscious before she dies. Mm-hmm. She's about to fall unconscious. And with this destiny roll of seven, just before she slips into unconsciousness, there is a cry from the baby in your arms. Mm-hmm. And for a split second, her eyes twist open and she looks like a moment of like, what? But then just just falls into unconsciousness. Oh, that's hard and the baby begins to cry in your arms. Okay. And you saw there was a brief moment of clarity in her eyes that something's knew, wrong. Yeah. That something's wrong. That you've lied to her. I say a very quick little prayer for the her. The people in the room all look to you, look around. There's three other people in the room. They all stare at you. And one of them says, Sister, is it a miracle? The baby lives. This is no miracle. Uh, I need to talk to someone. Oh, we wouldn't dare question. Of course, sister. You know in the stationing of things, you stand above most people that aren't in the organisational hierarchy of the militia. You are respected. You are revered. You are... Mm. You're a, you're a nun in a really religious town. People treat you with deference and respect. What was the name of the um, leader of the expedition? Uh, the leader of the expedition is Benomal Yal, the explorator, and the head guard is Zuikova Pelia. Okay. Um, I turn to one of the guards and say, get me, get me Zui. There isn't a guard in the room, I said. So there's only the three miners. Pop my head around the corner. Um, you pop your head around the corner and... Oh, sorry. There is a, there's another person in charge. I, I forgot. Agamini, Agamedes, who you haven't met yet, he's the human in charge of the mining expedition. So it's kind of like a co... Oh. It's a co thing. But Nomal Yal is the Mag- Magos Explorator attached to it. Agamedes is like the administrative director. Okay. I turn to the other person in the room mm. and say, get me Agamedes immediately. Oh, you want me to bring him here, miss? Yes. Yes, of course. And um, he scurries out of the room. Uh, at this point, Bron uh, and Curly are sl- swaggering down a corridor. You see a flustered-looking miner burst out of a corridor and sort of, um, yeah, hey, and turns to you. Have you have you seen Agamedes? The sister wants him. Oh, uh, let me uh, let me think for a second. Have I? <laughs> um, no. Okay. But you are going to report to Agamedes that your yeah. detonation has been a success. I was actually heading that way right now. Uh, I think I know where he is. I, forgi- forgive me, Lord. And you notice the chains around his ankles and his hands. And he says, Zukova will beat me senseless if I'm down on my quotas today. So do you mind passing it on? Sister, take him to the sister. And then he points down a corridor. She's just in there. Sure can. 
you go fix your quotas. So you know you're not a pen- you're not a penal. Yeah. You're a paid man. So mm. yeah, you know that he's like, I'll do whatever the sister tells me, but I'll wrap the punishment for doing it. Mm. It's kind of in this horrible circumstance yeah. where they can be bossed around, but all their different bosses will punish them for doing um, not what Anything. they told them to do, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and no one will reward them. Yep. So he he's like, Th- thank you for your kindness, sir. And then he rushes back to the mines. All right, Curly, uh, let's go see what I has to say. All right, let's go. We wander off to find Agamedes. All right, you head. Uh, just worth asking, because obviously I'm a, in the mining and this sort of demolition of what he has, uh, he's looking after, so I'm assuming I have a little more to do with him. Uh, yeah, you report to him directly. Yeah. Uh, he sort of tells you what needs to be blown up. Yeah. Uh, you know Agamenes, he is, uh, he's the mining director. He's a lot more optimistic. Uh, he's quite happy because of uh, mineral worth. Uh, where Benomal seems kind of depressed about the whole situation because there's no, like, architect that's going to suddenly vault them up into the next echelon. Mm-hmm. For Agamedes, who's a human administrator... Just a successful expedition uncovering resources for the Imperium like is a job well done. And every tick on his resume that says job well done is a bigger and more lucratively mm. paid job. Yeah. So for him, success is just running a good operation. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you head out of the mines and for the first time you're hit with the blustery wall of uh, wind and snow as you see a large Imperial um, land train uh, sitting there with a cargo container there are a few excavated, free now freestanding ruins, as well as the rooftops of other ruins poking out of the snow that haven't been dug down to yet. And um, a bit further off, there is a bunker-like prefabricated structure that was dropped off by a dropship, mm-hmm. uh, as well as a large, a cup, a few uh, sort of like <coughs> all-terrain vehicles, not a ride-on thing, but like an enclosed uh, motorized vehicle. It's like a basically the equivalent to a, a space jeep. It's like a space jeep. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they're around this thing, and you know that he runs the expedition from out of there. Okay, I go to the space jeep. Um, while this has been happening, uh, I'm going to say that um, the mineral reports. Probably also about time to be taken to Agamedes. So, the same time as this is going on, Victor has just you know, written his report. You've passed off the information to Benomal. Now you're going to pass off the mundane information to Agamedes. And you also step out into the snow. And you find yourself standing next to um, a rattling and a man who you've worked with occasionally. Uh, you know you know, you know, know enough of the important people. So, know you, you each know other's names and Victor. passingly. You work professionally. He mm. tells you, you put the charges there, I want to do this. Hey, do it's it. Rock Boy. How you doing? I would really prefer if you didn't call me that, Bron. Well, uh, you love the rock so much. I like breaking them, you like looking after them and caressing them. Sure, if you will go with that. <laughs> From uh, down at your hip. Precious little Rock Boy. Rock Hugger. Uh, maybe we'll call him Rock Hugger, shouldn't we, girly? Oh, I like it. Please don't. Please refrain. <laughs> All right, Rock I Boy. Oh, sorry, Rock Hugger. That was the one you preferred. Sorry, about, sorry to pass you. I'm on the way to Archimedes, so I'll catch you around. As am I. It would be much better if I could give him a data dump, but unfortunately I must hand in it manually on the... Okay, I think I keep going French. I walk ahead as you keep talking. <laughs> Walks on after. Yeah. I'm assuming uh, that... Uh, uh, make a perception check, Victor... As you are, you are <laughs> clapped. Uh, you are clapped on the hip, very uh, friendlyly, by a halfling or a rattling. You completely Ooh. do not succeed. Nope. Make a perception check. All Brian. right. All right. Challenge level is four. Okay, so I still felt it. You felt like a uh, like a pat on the like a clap on the <laughs> thing. Uh, I got nothing. No successes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Just like it, like quietly fuming, quietly fuming, smooths himself down. He is a professional. We have to take a aside because one thing that never comes up in our games, uh, you know, one shots and we usually don't bother with, but we actually have to today. Okay. Commerce level. What commerce oh. level are your characters? Right. Oh, we, we haven't need discussed this. Okay. I have no idea how to establish okay. this. So the base commerce level is assigned between two and four by me. Uh, and I'm going to assign um, both Victor and Sister... Al- uh, sorry, Sister Alexandra and Bron 
I'm going to assign your commerce level at two, mm-hmm. uh, which means you get a free skill point in something you have no skill points in. There is a beeping device. There is a beeping. Oh, yeah. sorry. Um, that's my watch. I forgot that I had an alarm on it. Did your alarm detonator going off? Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm just like, so I'm going to assign... Oh, it. shit, that one's live! <laughs> Victor, I'm going to assign it three. All so right. the reason that Sister Alexandra has a low commerce level is because as a hospitaler, she's basically only lives on, like, yeah. ration stipends and pay. Like, it, don't you don't really get paid. You get, like, an, like a, an amount. But now, you guys get to pick. You can either subtract or add one. If you add one, you take a quirk of wealth. If you subtract one, you gain another skill point in something that has no skill points in it. Okay. I'm just going to leave it. Leave it at two? Yeah. Well, you, he just you, does his job. Uh, yeah, like you I'll can just leave it, leave of course. Them. You leave it at three? Yep. Put one in deception. Two. You gave me two. Oh, sorry, two. Yep. I'll leave mine at three. Yep. Put the bonus one in deception. I'm going to leave it two. I'm happy. Cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. None of us are quirky. That's, we just get paid to do our job. It's fine. You're also, you know what? I feel. I feel like I'm gonna. Ch- sorry, I'm gonna give Bron a, th- a three. Two is too low. I'm gonna give you a three. Okay. I, you are paid. You're not penal. Right. I'm actually, the poor one is gonna be Sister Alexandra, who only operates on like the alms and charity that people would give. I don't need worldly possessions. <laughs> you're basically in that situation where you you're always provided probably better than everyone else. Yeah. But you don't have choice, and you don't pay for it. You just get given your like sistersly yep. rations by your uh, sister superior. Should ask, what is the quirk of what is a quirk of wealth? It's just another table you roll on. It's basically mm. like a disabled like characteristic, characteristic but related to money. Yep. It's a it's a newer feature in the latest system. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't think you'll have a quirk of wealth. Yep. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so kung, 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 big knock on the door. The door slay. Uh, big bang 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 knock on yeah. the door. Victor, you're standing there looking at the door getting knocked and you your eyes dart to the like <laughs> little hand thing that just goes boop and just slides the door open. But he's knocking on this big metal, like <laughs> prefabricated steel structure door. Do I say something, or do you just open the door? I'm just walk past slightly, just shove my way in, <laughs> and just pr- like making eye contact. Just <laughs> I don't make any eye contact back. I just assume my knock did that. <laughs> <laughs> the door slides open. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Curly, Poor Victor. This is what Everyone else gets the credit. Curly cracks out um, the 40k equivalent of a cigar and starts smoking it and leaning against with snow blustering, pulls his coat up and mm. says, um, I don't much want to talk to the boss, so go on. Oh, That's fine. I would prefer not <clears throat> to uh, inhale your smoke. Cool. And you two head into the building. You ain't been down in the mines very much, have you? No, that is your job. And I would prefer to keep it that way. <laughs> There are multiple, uh, there's probably about three or four administrative clerks uh, and there's also a guard in here. And you see Agamedes Sutra, who's dressed in finery beyond what anyone else is wearing. He has a, but still definitely not rich by any means, but he has a very nice winter coat over some very proper, definitely the sort of person who, who dresses for the job they want more than the job they have. Afternoon, sir. Oh, Wonderful. Uh, you have reports for me then. I hear, well, I felt the ground rumble. Mm, uh, very healthy expedition. Things seem to be progressing nicely for once. Wonderful. Hey, excellent. Uh, and the mineral findings? Uh, yes, uh, I have uh, already passed them on to the Megos, uh, but uh, I have found some interesting things. Unfortunately, it took some time to transcribe them and he hands them over. Cool. Takes There's them. some uh, interesting organics in there. And, uh, excellent. Uh, anything else to report to me? Oh, uh, uh something about, um, oh, Sisto wants to speak to you. Uh, so something else interesting discovered, apparently. Uh, he seems, so, um, Agamede seems kind of annoyingly dismissive of your report that you gave him. And, uh, and Victor, you are kind of have that compulsion, t- like, he says, okay, take me to him, Bron. And starts walking with you. And you have that compulsion to be like, walk with me, talk with me. Like, you want to keep pushing up the work you've done as he just walks off. uh, Every time. (laughs) One day, somebody will recognize Victor. And you're you're quite used to having to kind of follow people around and, like, try and get your point across. So, you're probably compelled to do that now. I follow along. Um... Did you look at the report? I said there were some very interesting findings. Unusual organics. Uh, right. 
So why did the sister want to see me? Oh, no, no. Uh, it's all a bit of a kerfuffle at the moment. Everyone seems a little bit distracted. But my God. And as we walk around and I sort of indicate at the... Uh, ancient things that were unearthing and mm. there's probably another distant explosion somewhere. I'm like, oh, is it this a thing of beauty that we make? Absolutely. Unco- it's a uncovering. Easy rock hugger. <laughs> <laughs> Un- uncovering these ones. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, it's just, you know, I never get to say this to you enough, but Bron, I just wanted to say, and at this point you get into the expedition, <laughs> I'm glad to have one of the angel touched with us here. It's good to know that a man of your faith and closeness to the the ultramarines he he he's one of the few people who actually has kind of bought your bullshit yeah i yeah. love it um and and he treats you way better than he should yeah uh, i rest my hand on the uh the pummel of my space marine uh pear knife dagger yeah. and i i nod and i say look uh the emperor protects her and he had to send someone to protect this expedition um and you saturated eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> and he heads down some corridors and gets into the room with Sister Alexandra. Mm. The other miners have cleared out now. You're alone, dead woman on a table. Um, and, oh. and he walks in. The door. There's doors in the, the the more established parts of the mine. It slides shut behind you, like and closes. Well, uh, sister, honoured. I give him a little bow. Um, I will quickly just say what yes, hello. Sister Alexandra looks like. Um, so she is dark skinned and white hair, like most sisters do. So they always have their hair in a bob, um, and she has a aquila underneath her eye as well. Cool, like yeah. a tattoo. Yeah, yep. What brings me here? There's a sleeping lady, and what are you holding? This is an abomination. Yeah, uh, I, I should say so. To think that the penal servants believe they have time to Procreate. create that on my watch. I shall, uh, I shall have Zakova double their punishments. Sir, any indiscretions? There is more. And then I kind of gesture him to come closer. He walks closer. And then Victor I, tries to like edge closer as well. It's mm-hmm. something interesting. You can all, yeah, you can all kind of mm-hmm. crowd. And around. I reveal. Slowly. And he slaps the baby. Like, he just <laughs> slaps its face. Just, like, Whoa. slaps it down away from you. And he's just like... And he rubs his hand on it. And he's just like, disgusting. It's disgusting. Sir, compose is it, yourself. Is it dead yet? Or is no, it's still alive. So it starts screaming. Uh, I would like to stomp on it. Well, it's still in her hands. I thought, oh, didn't he? I thought you said he smacked like, it. What's I'm the, assuming you what's didn't, What's the like, assumed response of... Like, would most people respond like that? Is that a fairly common... Do do people recognise it as Kirst or Zeno? Imagine you are in the church in, like, the 1300s and someone just walks in and says, God, I just want to... I love Satan. I've been making out with (laughs) Satan. I've been casting spells. Here's my spell book. And you walk up to the... Like, it is, like, blasphemy of the highest order. It is revolting. Yep. Why is it still he, he didn't slap the baby to the ground, but he's like he slapped it in the head like pushed and it pushed away. it away from yeah. him oh, violently. It. Like it's not a pleasant thing. That I'll he hold did. on to it. Mm. Say, it's screeching, sir. Why is that thing still alive on my base? I'm is just... that a Zenos? These are both my questions. I believe it's a, a mixture of both. And it came out of. And he looks over at uh, the dead woman. Her. That is correct. At least she did not survive childbirth. He um, he starts unclipping a leather pouch on his waist that has a finely wrought last pistol in it and reaching for his gun. I kind of look at him concerned and say, Sir. Make a persuasion check. I'm just going to pat mine just in like instinctually. Yeah, everyone's like going for their arms. Challenge level two. Ah. Nothing. Ouch. Not persuasive. <laughs> he, he draws the gun and he, sa- and, and he says... Your <sighs> composes himself. Destiny roll for the baby. The baby. Yeah. No, I'm going to say destiny roll for you. Twelve. So it's not too bad. He says, he calms himself for a moment with the gun, and he mm-hmm. says, "I, I have the utmost respect, sister, for your natural inclinations towards nurturing and healing the arms of the people." 
is an abomination and shall be killed. I wholeheartedly agree, sir. But I don't suggest such primitive matters. I can... Should I get some Magos? He might be interested in this. <laughs> He's going to... The corpse, of course. He, probably. He looks... Des- another destiny roll for that. 12 again. Okay, so he says... Maybe. Uh, but... If we silence this here, it ends here. And... <sighs> if the Magos gets her claws on it, she might turn it into a field day. I personally think we should focus on our job. Do you really want the Mechanicus taking over our dig? No, sir. I I say we just slay a Xenos and call it done. Problem solved. Done enough to be messy. So, I've got the data <coughs> dump thing. Is it possible to, like, contact the Magus wirelessly? No. You, you could vox them, but they'd know. You have basically... You could calm them, but you'd have to speak. Be like a phone. <laughs> Not a good way to make friends in the room. <laughs> no. Then we are in agreement, gentlemen. Sure. Who would you have to do it, sir? This bears investigation, though. And, unfortunately... A sister... Did anyone else know about this? Uh, I there was only the, the guy in the room that. But was they didn't see the baby. They only okay. heard it. You've had it wrapped up. True. So the identity of the child is concealed. And I will, I will deal with the other loose ends. And he walks over and draws his gun and aims it at the mother who's laying dead on the thing. But he doesn't know that he has. He just thinks he's sleeping. Do you react? Yeah, I turn. I say. She is already deceased. Ah, your pragmatism. I should have assumed, sister. Sorry. Um, now, it seems we have a bit of a compact. No one outside this room should hear of this. But I would have you gather some information for me. And to do that, you need to go into, the, into town, into the starport. As for that, can I trust that you'll deal with it, sister? Or shall I deliver the Emperor's mercy? Although it is too good for such an abomination. I believe that we should all bear witness to these events so we can truly know that whatever this thing is remains dead here. It's still worth. I nod in agreement. Uh, I concur. I go get another needle. Duh. Oh, you're going to use it. This is almost like a ceremony now. <laughs> yeah, or like yeah. a gas or something. Yeah. Something, same deal. Do you want to shoot her a little squeamish no, about it? Because it's a baby. Shooting it will be the most pleasant passing. Okay, can I shoot it not with a huge, like just like a. I'm holding my giant knife. <laughs> he. Okay, I'll. Oh, sorry. He Make. A turkey um, here. You are smart enough to know that probably of anything in the room, the mm. most efficient thing to kill this. Monster. I'm just going to call it a monster mm. because we don't want to... It is actually a monster. Yeah, it's yeah. like it got claws and it's like... Ah, it's got like part of a baby's face and it's crying like a human baby. But it's... It's a it's, an alien. it's a mutant. It's an alien hybrid mutant. Mm. Um, is the last pistol because it will literally shoot right. a like 20 cent coin size cauterizing laser beam that just goes straight Does through it. Archimedes have that? He has, a, he has a highly wrought last pistol. I pass it to him then. He clutches an imperial uh, Aquila necklace on his chest. Uh, he, you you go to pass it to him because you can. He you says hold it he just says it. drop it. Okay, I'll put it on the floor. Oh, you put it on the floor. Okay, and it starts to like move a little bit, and he just last pistol start saying a few straight to his stuff. forehead and just pulls the trigger. And there's a smoking. There's a just a whine and a hiss and a brief like. <laughs> noise and then this like purple ichor oozes out of its head and there's a steaming uh, steam from where the last gun has like melted a half meter into the ice behind its head question mm. does that purple ichor does it bear remnants of the other observations that Victor and Bron have had make a perception check both of you can I put some of it in a vial just to have <clears throat> challenge level sure yeah uh, challenge level three 
You got one. One. I've only got three dice. Cool. I'm going to use a destiny point. For advantage? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh. Three. Three successes. Well done. You, Bron, draws the conclusion that uh, that, that Icarus organic congealed goop is somewhat similar, but vaguely similar mm. to some of the streaks that have been reported and you've seen in the ice collections and stuff like that. I kneel down and scoop on the tip of my marine knife mm-hmm. this Ica and stand up and hold it fascinated. I almost dismissed it and then all of a sudden I had this flash through my head of like the the substance, the vein we found in the ice. Hold that up and look at Agamedes. This I've seen I've seen this, I've heard of this recently. There's more of this. Maybe more of them. Oh, well, that's not an attractive thought. But there should be more of them. So, I mean, it did not <laughs> impact this woman yeah. by itself. How did it get there? Where was she working? There uh, is certainly investigation to be done, sir. Yes. So I'll have you go into town and bring me some things. Yes. Head out immediately. Go. And don't tell anyone. Yes, sir. The owner protects. He quickly scurries on a data slate and hands you a data slate. And then we'll pick it up in the next episode. All right. Wow. That was fun. Yep. Do you know what else is fun? Hanging out and enjoying our patrons. Yay. Thank you so much for our patrons for support. Now, Lachlan, we read out our patrons. The first yep. one is, oh, no, error 404, <laughs> patron not found. The that's, a, that's a real shame. <laughs> Dark Fox. Uh, tickle Dog. Professor, Professor X-17. Nearly, nearly well, listed. Ryan Ayo by now. Earth Angel Sarah. Nick. And AJ Macy. Thank, Thank you, you all so much for your support. Thank Yay, you. Thanks. And uh, we have a part two to get to very soon, which you will see next week. Uh, mm-hmm. But if you want to see our, the two parts, which are recorded in one session fortnightly on the Thursdays, you can join us on Twitch. Uh, and also remember there's a podcast. So if you watch this on YouTube and you want to enjoy on Spotify or iTunes or whatever it is you enjoy podcasts on, go check that out. Podcasts but otherwise, that, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that brings us to the end of part one. Yay. Dun, See dun, you guys. Dun. It's tabletop time. time. I'm Jazza. I'm Lachlan. I'm Dave. And I'm Jen. 40k time, 40k time, 40k okay, time. Then. All right, everyone. We're coming back to our 40k adventure. I hope you're keen. Our recap? Our recap Kanish. is done by our players. Mm. Bron, what was your experience? We're uh, excavating a site for the Emperor, as you do. And we seem to have discovered something a little bit disconcerting. Uh, some sort of matter, some sort of substance. We've all observed in separate ways. I recognised it in uh, a Xenos child we seem to have also discovered. Yeah, the it's abomination that's happened on this, this godforsaken planet. There's a woman who's given birth to a abnormal creature. We've put an end to both of them, but we're now to travel and see what we can find. Uh, I have also found some of this. Uh, there was some interesting organic in the minerals. And as usual, I've been overlooked, except by Zimegos. He seemed to have been, or she seemed to have been interested and um, perhaps there is a way for me to carry more favour as it were cool yes. All right. you have just been handed a data slate uh, as well as the keys to an imperial vehicle that will drive you into the local starport which is like an hour drive away you're heading out of a corridor assigned by Agamedes as part of his new confidant by You've kind of been brought into a little bit of a, um, there's a term for it, but it's a little compact. You, by, by the nature of you knowing this information that no one else can know, you are bound to each other now. Um, First rule of Xeno Club is you don't talk about Xeno Club. That is (laughs) very (laughs) easy to violate that rule. By like looking for a way to just like slink off for a second. Are you serious? All right. Yes. So you're rolling deception or stealth? Well, first the corridor door opens and you okay. head out. You branch down a couple of corridors. For a moment, you're all tightly wound together. Um, 
how, how, yeah, would you like to attempt to sneak away? I'd like to just sort of like slink away and like attempt to either like write this up and like data burst it to the, to the Magos or like as, as sneakily and subtly as possible. Basically just go like, hey, Magus. Make a stealth check. And the other two make perception Perceptions. checks. My perception is two. You have to beat that. Jen? Oh, great. Your perception is three. You have to beat that. Go yeah. for it. You got three! Oh! Destiny point. You're going to spend a destiny? Do you have to, do you have to beat her Yeah, three. you have to beat the All right. destiny point. Spend a, so you spend a destiny. Cheeky, cheeky boy. All right. <laughs> so, and the point. Worth it. The brief window you get is when... You round, the group of you round a corner and the entire corridor is blocked by a single man who is about eight foot tall and broad as the sides of the chamber. You know him as Bip. As soon as he sees his sister Alexandra... A man, not a marine or anything. He, you, it'll become very evident. He drops to his massive knee. A couple of pipes that he was carrying on his shoulder cling to the ground. Milady... And he, he drops his head, uh, his bald head with his, his big, his massive underbite with big teeth coming out. Um, Bip is, a, is an ogren, the unintelligent ab humans used for their fighting prowess and also their labor. Uh, physical labor. Um, he does most of the big lugging and carrying, um, but he's extremely religious. And he drops to his knee, drool drips from his jaw that hangs slackly. Yep. So Alexandra's not, like, evil, so she's just going to respond and hey, say... Hey, he's a sanctioned abhuman. Yeah. Mm. She's just going to say, my child, what brings you here? Work. As you were, then. Can we get around him? Um, no. Out of the way, you big lump. And we're he, off somewhere. He's going to make a perception check to... Yeah, he doesn't, even when you're saying that, he doesn't understand what he's doing wrong. Yeah. And in, this is the moment you kind of could slip around the corner. You sort of slip around the corner. Um, Magos, there was an Xenos half-child that was found with blood similar to the organics that were found. I hope this information pleases you. And then just saunter back in, just like... <clears throat> Make a persuasion check. Challenge level, raw challenge level is three. We're not going to do enough waste. One. Two. One. One success. One. <clears throat> not very persuasive. This would not be the first time you distract me from my work with your constant pleas for my attention, Victor. If you provide evidence of such, I would be happy to see it. But this fantasy is pushing far-fetched. As you fish. Cool. Ooh, uh, and he, you come back? Mm, uh, just saunters back in, just like, I never left. Cool. And you're currently dealing with Bip in the corridor, who's blocking the whole corridor. Mm-hmm. Where's Curly? Is he with us? Or Curly, uh, Curly isn't with you. Okay. Yeah. My child, we wish to pass. You appear to be blocking the way. Move! Make a persuasion check against Me? challenge level one. Yep. Uh, one. One. Uh, so he manages to just comprehend and he hobbles backwards the full length out of the corridor until he's out in the snow with his head bowed in deference the whole time, <laughs> leaving a trail of dropped pipes that are clanging as they drop. And then he stands and stretches himself out and gets to the side and he says, um, Blessed day. And bows his head again to you again. And it's like tears welling up in the corner mm-hmm. of his eyes. Um, basically, for such a simple mind as this Ogren, merely seeing a member of the Adeptus Sororatus is akin to a miracle occurring, like being touched by an angel. Yep. Uh, so he feels that about you and he's clearly touched. I and then, yep. yeah. A as little non-say blessed day as well. As you push past, having not noticed that Victor has left and come back, um, there is some loud shouting. Um, <clears throat> it is not my duty to discipline you as well, Bip, but get your ass back to work. As Zukova, who has freshly been disciplining someone else, 
else starts heading back inside. She is standing next to Curly, who is walking in. Curly has got a um, is pushing like a little trolley that's covered in demolitions. There's a couple of mining operatives um, with them outside uh, in the distance. Uh, is, he, is he near us? Yeah, he's close. So as he's going past, I sort of like look at the tray. Uh, do I know that this is stuff I can just take as a demolition person? This no, it's being used. Currently. Oh, okay. This is on operation. But Curly walks past. I saw like I am like oh tasty morsels there. Eh? He looks at you and he's like, "What are you off to? You were meant to be working with me." Oh no, uh, this is our executive business. You see. Uh, you wave the data slate that yep. has like a seal on it or something. Yeah. Special like, uh, emperor's business. Oh, lucky you. Kissing ass wax out. <laughs> I'm, uh, some. I've been assigned to, uh, well, you'll be missing out actually, doing the biggest excavation yet. And he points at the trolley and he's like, there's a big cavern. We're going to open it up. Oh. Then make sure that any samples are sent to my way as usual. Yeah, yeah, make sure to be careful of those rocks. Look after them real nice and gentle, eh? Give him a wink, like... Yes, yeah, so no, not quite as tough it. as Bronze Head. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have fun gallivanting around. And then he heads in. Change of pace. I ha- I'm assuming we're going to the vehicle that you mentioned. Yep. I've got the keys. i got three points and ride pilot, which never comes in use. Hell, so let's yeah. do this! Woo! Road songs. Let's go. We're riding, people. Right. We'll jump in. So you jump into the yep. Imperial uh, vehicle. <laughs> Get in, I mean, yeah, you make a ride pilot check. Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> Hell <nothing>. yeah. <laughs> One point. <of> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> three successes. Yeah. You deftly activate it. You actually know, like... You turn the key, and you half turn it back, turn it again, half turn it back, turn it the third time, and the, and it starts, and you kind of know that, like, this machine needs that. You probably are one of the frequent drivers you drive crew into town, mm. the group you drink beer with and stuff. Um, and, yeah, the, the, you don't spin the wheels or anything, you pull it out even in your snowy ground, and you deftly handle the vehicle as you head towards the starport. And for the brief moment, the three of you, for the next hour or so as you drive through this uh, terrain, you um, yeah, you get to talk. Do you have any moments you want to this share? This is not a road trip I uh, ever thought I'd be on, to be honest. Scientist and a sister. <laughs> I sort of chuckle to myself as I'm driving. What's so funny? Well, it's like, you know, uh, a sister, a scientist and a badass spaceman walk into a bar. What's the punchline? Is it one of those is not what they think they are? <laughs> I don't get What dressed. a competent scientist. I sort of rib you and like wink. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> Poor Victor. The thing that we discovered in the in the caverns, have either of you encountered anything like it before? No, and it is fascinating. Mm. Yes, fascinating. Can't say I have. What Sorry. about you? Surely you've seen the cursed things of the unspeakable enemies of the Emperor. Do what? No. You're I've got a, no idea. Well... I would have heard about aliens and Xeno and... You, you, most of you have heard of Xenos, but it's like a vague concept, like a witch for the witch burnings. <laughs> it's like, they're bad. Xeno's bad. So, if the Imperium finds, like, available Xeno technology, is that just, like, put that on the pile and burn it? Or, like, figure yep. out if we can use it? It's destroyed. Damn. Now... All of you roll a general knowledge check. Challenge level three. Pop arm two. Uh, three, four, four. For, for Sister Alexandra. And two, four three, for four. Victor. Nice. Now, Victor and Sister Alexandra know that what happens in the core systems and the rules do not always play out on the fringes because there are some things that people don't have and some resource routes of trade that people maybe would like (laughs) and you guys know that especially here on this world but also just in general on fringe worlds uh, and especially in ultramarine territory where they're a little bit less um, pious and zealous with their depiction of the imperial faith in fact the sister would know exclusively sister alexander would know this that um, Gulliman or the Space Marines don't even worship the God Emperor as a god. And because you're from the Ultramar uh, subsector, you kind of have that. They they 
while that's the Imperial Creed that you're part of, Space Marines are aside from that mm. and they don't treat it like that. Um, so, but you know that uh, even in this starport, there have been sightings of Xeno technology and people have utilised it. Um, yeah. I believe that this might be under <coughs> some kind of influence of Xenos, but I cannot say for certain. So it shivers up your spine, even talking about it. Scary space out there. Well, this is my final mission and I intend to finish it. <sighs> Maybe I will find something first while and get onto a better assignment. Time passes and with a churning of snow and the sleet storm on snowstorm fades and you see the silhouette of the settlement as a blue thruster markers descend from the sky towards one of the landing pads and leave it contrails in the air and you sort of see a wide you know like Moss Eisley from um, Star Wars not vertically but <coughs> sprawling um, but very much industrial cold steel it's not like stone it's like prefab structures dropped in and this is the largest settlement in this part of the world there's probably a few thousand people live here and from it are uh, a lot of the miners live here, the, the free working ones, and it all kind of branches off. They go to all different dig sites. Yours is the only remaining dig in this area of any archaeological significance and research. The rest are now converting to like some for whatever agriculture they can muster, but mostly it's digging out metals for whatever. And more importantly, setting up the groundwork for like big scale earth stripping. So they're building like big space pads and stuff for things to land on. Um, and yeah, you pull out to the outskirts of town where other vehicles are parked and you arrive at the entrance. There is a gate, there is a wall, but there is no, it's not closed. Um, Have any of us been here before? Yeah, many, many yeah, times. Cool. Many, many times. Um, so we know where to go and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and it's very, very unoriginally just called Homeport. Um, people here, it's so isolated that there is a, a universal sense of wanting to attach to something that feels good. So they just call it home port because they, they, it just gives them a little bit of a fuzziness to them, even though it's completely not original. The town has never been, de it's got, it's like called, it's like designated alpha row 32184, like mm. sort of thing. It's got no warmth to it. So they would just call it home port. Mm. Um, and as you arrive, there is a couple of Astra Militarum guard on the gate. Um, and yeah, but they don't stop you. There's no need to. Sort yeah. of charge through and nod. Mm -hmm. um, head to where we're headed get and the message there Victor <coughs> looks at the data slate and on the data slate there is a requisition request and the payment that would be required for it for you to um, purchase a advanced uh, scanner that is basically designed to detect biological components which they don't have on the base that you've been operating finally something of more verse and use um, and yeah, you guys can make a, a check. You guys can make probably... I'm just trying to think of where you're going to be able to find this. Um, maybe just a perception to have a look around for now. Um, be good. Challenge level? Challenge le I'll give you challenge level three. Yeah, that nope. was two for Victor. <coughs> I've got three dice, and that's none for me. <coughs> One, two, three. Three successes. Fumba. The sister uh, of all people is the one who spots a sort of a, a tech store. And, yeah, you can head over there. Gentlemen, follow me. Oh, they have moved. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I follow. You wander in. There's a, uh, a man behind the counter, as well as a servitor. And stock everywhere. He looks up at you. A sister. My fondest greetings to you, miss. Mm, good day, sir. And some uh, assorted miners, I'm guessing. Empress finest, sir. Indeed. What can I help you with today? Minus. He scratches his... Um, I have to say he scratches his beard and you scratch your beard. He scratches his <laughs> beard. He's, like got, <laughs> he's got like a, a goatee pulled quite long um, and he's picking at it. Mm. He seems to have a couple of scabs on his face mm. that he's like picking at his beard line. Wonderful. Do you have a requisition order? 
for a specific piece of technology, which hands over the data. Mm. He looks at it. Yes. Yeah, I've got exactly what you need. Good. And I'm going to get you all to make a perception check. Chance of a two. God. That would be a... Two. 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 <coughs> Three for Sister Alexandra. And... Three, Three for, Alec, for Victor. <coughs> From the you back. all immediately smell a rat. Like, he's literally? He's lying. He's lying. But he, he doesn't have it, but he's going to sell you something. He, like, starts getting something. You're like, yeah, this scandal will do the trick. And that is not what oh. is... No, no, you say what you say. That is not what is on the uh, requisition form. I'm not a miner. I am a scientist. I know my equipment. <coughs> well, it's the best you get. Well, that's not what we ask for. So if you do not have it... I step forward at this point and say, no, no, I'm pretty sure we're going to get better. 14, Destiny. Uh, Make an intimidation. Yeah, so strength-based persuasion? Uh, I'm going to say a persuasion check as normal, but with a assist from your uh, weapon skill. So I'm going to roll a a combat. You can roll a vocational check um, related to... Explain. You're a pretty rough-looking guy. Yeah. I'm going to let you use your. You like hoist your bondolier of bombs, and you can use your explosive engineer vocation as an assist. Yeah. And you fail one my success. assist, so that's negative two oh. to my persuasion. Can I do a quick glance over him and um, see can, what he's suffering from? Yeah, make a medical check. Can I, in defence of the player's situation, can I? Because I would have just suggested like a plus one dice for the strength component. That's nice. Because I don't think of persuasion. (laughs) Okay. All right. I'll take what I'm giving. All right. So now I'm persuading. uh, And I got nothing. I am the most unconvincing person in the world. The guy guy looks at you fondling your bomber. I mean, you wouldn't have mattered. You would have failed the roll anyway. The guy uh, watching you fondle (laughs) your bombardier and he's like, is, are you attempting to kill us all, sir? The item simply is the best I have in stock. What are you, are you persuading? For, he has a nasty habit of picking the skin off his beard line and ingrown hairs in his beard line. That's what he's suffering from. Nothing medically significant. Do I have something that could fix it? Hmm? Help? No. Like a nice um, exfoliating cream. But what was Victor <laughs> going to say as a scientist? Uh, I was going to say, if you do not have it, then you could direct us to something as it does and then rather than losing business today, you will not lose business Forever. He ro- I rolled the destiny before because I kind of heard where you were going with that and you got a 14. So he um, he looks and he says, all right, look, I don't have what you want. And if it's that important to the emperor's mission, there's a place that will. But, and he leans in, she might not like it. She? She might not like it. Yep. Uh, yep, that's what I said. She might not like it. <laughs> well, if you are concerned, maybe sister should leave and uh, I could take care of it. You, you ain't taking care of nothing without us two. I'm sure I can handle it. Uh, that's up to them. Well, uh, <clears throat> may, I, <clears throat> may I have your word that uh, <clears throat> this in no way reflects on my uh, my good standing? This, this is just something I've heard. Nothing to do with me at all. I'll give you a word. Enough. What it is depends on what we get. He is being uh, acquiescing to our request. You have my word. And your sister? I know you are a hospitaler, but I've heard that the Emperor's punishment falls on those who... Well, I'm sure they all deserve it. You have my word, sir. All right. Here it is. There's a merchant on 3rd Street. Here's the directions. You just turn left to the haberdasher and pass the butcher. There it will be. It's in a bit of a lame way. You've got uh, some fabrics. The frontage is that of a fabric store. All right, thanks. I start to <laughs> stomp off. Cool. Is there anything around the store that I might find, you know, useful, interesting, science-wise? Probably a bunch. 
Yeah, there's a few devices. Is there anything in particular you're looking that you would want to be able to do that you can't currently? I'm just going to assume like I don't have like any sort of a photographic device, so I'm going to like see if there's. No, any there's, s- there's a pixel to capture device. Yep. The, in the store. <laughs> yep. Well, that uh, transfers shoot. over comms or something. If he could. It's send a him. digital camera, basically. Yeah. 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 Uh, I will uh, pick that up to show as a sign of good faith, and so and I will get this on the way. All right. That's uh, and you give you, that's seventy-five credits, sir. Uh, Deep. Does that affect. And you reach for your problem? you reach for your cred chip, and it's not there. I mean, apologies, sir. Somebody appears to have uh, apprehended my... Can me? I roll? Because I'm starting has to walk off. No, you, you dudded the check as well. You did. You both failed, completely flubbed the perception check. You got no idea. So, and he took mine too? No, no, no. Oh, you want to check yours? No, I'm overhearing this and I'm wondering if I know um, Curly enough to know that. That's classic Curly. I'm going to say because you crit failed the perception check okay. for some reason, yep. it's just like you just didn't assume it happened. Fair enough. Yeah. I will be an apology. Uh, I will be back to buy something <laughs> soon, but... <laughs> Poor Victor! My... <laughs> and you keep patting. <laughs> and you find that your holster is a lot softer than it usually is when you pat it, and it's empty. <laughs> and they have taken my gun. When I find out who is responsible for this, I feel delight. Is Bron actually just laughing in the corner? No, I am. I am <laughs> delighted in directing them towards the guard personnel. Pre- pretty much everything on your belt is gone that would have been on your belt. So there's like your, you're like a lunch. My even. belt is gone. <laughs> oh, and my pants are on my ankles. When does this happen? <laughs> like everything. It was you just got completely, completely looted. Um, yeah. Oh, Somebody no. is going to pay for this. And you head outside. Fuming. Like, he is. He says nothing, storms right past you towards the directions. Obviously just furious. Oh, what's up, your bum? Somebody has stolen from me. Do I l- put two and two together? Or? Make a... General knowledge? Make a friendship check. And I'm going to give you five <laughs> friendship dice and you need... <laughs> I love Two successes. Them. This seems to be a core rule. <laughs> the friendship check. We need something that sounds more like that. I need a big accountable too. Yeah, you I get know. five successes. I know. You know, exactly Curly. Exactly what's happening. This happened. is so Curly. Friendship is magic, and magic is. But cur- you also know that Curly <laughs> stole more than he wanted to keep, and you know what's going to happen is that Curly will also have broken into your quarters, and will also <laughs> have then put your stuff minus the valuables he actually wanted to steal in random places. <laughs> basically make you then be like oh fuck I just I'm scatterbrained like oh, I yeah, left my gun yeah. in my cabinet I left that there I left that there and we'll all be in your locked room because I aced the friendship check so well yep I know Curly and but I've will- been working with him for years so I get his behaviour and I assume that I know him enough to basically like I've experienced this early on and turned it around so that he would never do it to me oh you're no never but I'm like in fact sometimes you get the reward like he'll, he'll yeah, shout you I know out. he's gonna shout some drinks yeah, yeah. soon so I, I, I chuckle and I'm like oh with God. five friendship dice you're not gonna rat out Curly <laughs> no no what is so funny oh I just you know I'm just uh, <laughs> up for some drinks later is all <laughs> gentlemen I hope oh, we have some other related no? drinks Okay. You press on. So you press on. You round a few corners and eventually you arrive. I love that so much. At this fabric <sighs> store. There are billowing sheets of fabric, uh, bolts of them that flap in the breeze heavily. Some of them are tattered, the ones that have been outside for too long. And you kind of have to push past them at the entrance. Uh, it's almost like an open door situation as you go out into a yard, like a junk shop yard. Just storms in just ahead of everybody else he is just furious at the moment looks for the front desk slams down the requisition form not bullshit us if you need this if you will go if you will be out of your hands the money is there there is a eloquent looking man behind the counter who looks at you blinks looks at the three of you then he says I do have in fact uh I do have an item that will function in exactly the capacities you require. Wunderbar. Yes. Uh, however, I'm not sure that I will be serving you today. And he glances towards the sister. Why is that? Well, uh, sometimes you have to accept that to make progress in the world... 
you need to abandon some elements of unnecessary superstition. Da. What's uh, Sister Alexandra thinking right now? <coughs> Pray tell. That I have told all I should. And now I'm going to get you all to make a perception check. And this is a split challenge level. Challenge level three, five, and seven. I hope I get three because I only got three dice. Nothing. I got one. One success. So these are what you're trying to hit. You got you two. Get two successes. For Victor. I can't get seven. Oh. You got three. So. Mm. Did you? Three. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Um, so you recognize that this man is um, talking very eloquently, very well, very smoothly, but there is a very subtle sub vocalization happening and you feel that he is using a language translator. Well, you wouldn't really know that, but you know that he's using some... There's something off about his voice just very slightly that you own, only the sister picks up. I say, very well. I will show myself out then, if you will not partake in my company. So it works for me. Of course. And I'll wait outside. Cool. And then he says, as for the two of you... Da. And a wall of fabric, because it's just a fabric shop, a wall of fabric to his left just goes and just turns off. The wall of fabric turns off, just disappears. There's a brief flash of blue light. And beside you see tables racked with clean and elegant technology that is definitely not of Imperium make. There are what you recognize you've seen once or twice, basically equivalent of like a Nintendo Switch, but in the future, mm. like there's games devices, commercial devices, all kinds of things in this room that are not Imperial technology. Well, mm. that is impressive. I, yep. Yes, you are clearly a learned man, a man of intelligence. It is refreshing to have one of such as you in my company. Thank you. You have no idea how pleasing it is to hear something. And as for you, sir... Your taste in explosive devices is exquisite, but might I say, we could offer you something that would far outweigh their capabilities. My mouth starts watering mm -hmm. slightly. <clears throat> I, like, clear my throat. Oh, uh, I'm listening. He, he invites you in and he moves with a grace and elegance as he walks. Um, he's into this area and he kind of beckons for you to follow and, he's, and mm -hmm. he, he crosses his hands sort of like this and he says um, as he walks you must embrace change to get ahead how long have you struggled how long have you struggled with your tools that do not achieve the jobs you need them to I've struggled with tools my entire life it's not necessarily the uh, implements that I do for my work but tools nonetheless and just slight glance. You wrong direction. He's I'm just look. I it goes over my head. I'm looking for bombs. <laughs> I'm looking around the walls. <clears throat> He's going to make a perception check to read you guys because I don't want to assume. Mm -hmm. Oh my word! Uh, he oh. gets one, two, three, six. four, five, six successes. Uh, you can roll to resist or to hide with deception. I don't think I'm hiding anything. I have five dice for deception. I'm not going to bother. So you're just mm. letting him read you like a book? Yeah, okay, pretty So much. he gets six successes. Um, and he says, You, um, a learned man. Da? Intelligent beyond your kin and capable of reason. I'm sure you have never been fully satisfied in your work. Not even close. You have no idea. He picks his targets. <laughs> <laughs> he slides his finger across uh, a device that you, like the sleek lines, there's like blue light. It just looks just a man. You're used to using like this backwards imperial technology that while advanced operates on like weird binary systems and human brains and all that. And this is just oh, this like elegant. Fallout. It's yeah, it's like it's exactly like Fallout. The 40k technology you work with is like CRT monitors, green, like green on black. Even though they're doing advanced <laughs> calculations, they, they're rudimentary and holding mechanical. themselves back. Like, Very much yeah. 80s sci-fi technology is the feeling, mm. like the alien ship. Whereas this is like Star this Trek. This is Star Trek sci-fi. Sci and he says, 
men like you can always serve a greater purpose in the world. Duh. But that is true. If what today have you doing? At the moment I am analyzing minerals in the excavation sites. I think much is interesting, some organics that is unusual. That's organics? Oh, that's great hell. where we've got the uh, thing here. Yes, of course, the scanner. And what would you be looking for? Whatever the scanner could tell us, I suppose. Um, probably identifying what kind of biological source it is. And what has got you suspicious of biological sources? I'm not sure how much you need to be privy to. Yeah, and I'm not sure why you're around. talking as much as you fucking are. Three. Three. I'm just going to keep talking. Okay. Well, we found this... Um, he looks at, as he's talking to you, he kind of gestures his hand to you, like to shut you up, almost impolitely, but so weirdly smoothly that you feel like compelled that maybe he actually, like, you know, when you kind of, maybe I was speaking out of turn, like he just yeah. has this vibe to him. It's, he's, you're not affected yeah. psychically or yeah, anything. Yeah. He just <coughs> has so much, like he, he controls this room. Yeah. And he, he says to you, he says, um, Bron, and you never said your name. And he's like, demolitions expert with the mining dig. I brought up your profile. I know it can be hard to trust new things, but haven't you ever wondered um, how much more efficiently you could mine with uh, a bondolier of plasma detonators? And he gestures to a shelf where you can see these, like, blue primed charges in these canisters. Mm, I'm assuming being an expert, I know this stuff. It's like <coughs> military. That's almost... That, in fact... It's basically beyond imperial capability, but you know plasma guns and yeah. weaponry is insane, like, yeah, powerful. Yeah. Mm. Meanwhile, uh, having somebody that's actually listening and appreciating him, he's just... He basically just rambles on everything that's happened. Including the baby. Including the baby. Like, he says it in a bit of hushed turns and semi-vague of, like, there was this half Xenos I would scene. intrude and stop him no, were yeah. I he not so glowing-eyed distracted by this wall of, and, like, plasma and, weaponry. And so so I've just tuned you out. Well. Yep. It's like half whispering as well. And then the blood as well was similar to this eye cause that we have found inside of the ice. And it's fascinating. <laughs> he says, here, I will give you your scanner. And he hands you a device and he says, free of charge for an enlightened mind. Danke. And for you? I'm just gazing at the wall. A sample. And he hands you one plasma detonator and he says, a try before you buy. Where can I try it? In your work, Some of minds. I want to. I want to try it now. That would cause unwanted attention in the I, city district. I um. We can pull. We can do a stopover on the way back, if you must. No. I think I want to buy it. <laughs> uh. You want to buy all of them? No, I just want to buy some. He offers it. He no, offers you one for free. I take one for free, and I um, am indicating I would like to spend some commerce to okay. to get more. Even Your though commerce level three, mm. yeah, to buy these from him, <coughs> one would be commerce level three. I buy one, so you drop to one. Yep. So you spend all your money on buying a second one. Yep. Okay. He exists this, this is in my mind, this is space marine technology. This yeah. is like I can, this is like before I was working in bolters with my little booms, right? Mm. This is like now I can have a plasma blaster, right? <laughs> Bron, um we have these unused uh, credits here. What? Well, I was um he has decided that the cause that we are working for, the Emperor. Bullshitting. Uh, for so, the, did you uh, quote the, Emperor? Do you just put no, the like, Emperor in bunny rabbits? Fell giving the present company. Point is that what, we, what are you on about? We received he, the scanner. He says present company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The we Emperor got the scanner. Protects, yeah, yeah. Well, now we're just uh, exactly. The Emperor protects. The point is yeah, that we got yeah. the scanner pro bono. Therefore, the requisition money is suspiciously unused. You don't ha have any money. Yeah, the cred chip you got handed that to we pay for the, for the scanner. scanner but they didn't, he didn't take so it. So requisition money was basically offering unused. to buy you more grenades. Embezzling. <laughs> oh. Oh, wait, well, is this a... What are you trying to say? I am saying that this money not being used and us receiving the scanner is quite suspicious. <sighs> so it would look better if the money was used, Yeah, no? yeah, yeah. You, you talk a lot of sense. We should use it all. Um, 
I'll uh, just hands it. Yeah, and I take it. I don't know how much credits it is for that. I can give you something even more special. What do you have in mind? Call it, <laughs> call it a rainy day device. And he goes over to a shelf. Actually, he doesn't go over to a shelf. He gestures to a shelf. He hasn't picked up anything. Mm. You know it. And he gestures to a device and he says, um, a cryo detonator. It may not cause the wanton destruction you enjoy, but it is quite enjoyable to freeze a cubic mile. A oh, cubic mile? Oh, it will create wow. a micro singularity and freeze anything in the radius. Oh, I like your micro singularities. Make sure you detonate it far from it. Can I make a check to see if, like, we're on a frozen planet? Mm-hmm. I've just learned about a technology that can freeze something in a mile, and we're in this weird. Can I make some sort of check to put like some dots together that may or may not? Uh, you can use something related to maybe general knowledge. General archaeology. Uh, I'd say probably use your archaeology to see if it's like sounds like there was flash freezing or something, and you completely fail. You have no idea. No, I'm just like holy yeah. Crap, you I just you, your mind is blown. Okay. Yeah, I uh, take a- anything I can get or am offered, but that seems fancier. So yep, I'll take that. Yep. That's uh, so, but it still makes a boom, right? <laughs> so I sort of say sheepishly. Realising it's a very juvenile question as soon as it comes out of my mouth. <laughs> of course. Now, Bron, would you leave me one moment with Victor to finalise our transaction in private? Yeah, uh, uh, can I... Um, you may take them. I reach up and g- grab mm-hmm. the item. So now I've got a plasma charger. Two, two, plasma, two chargers plasma chargers and a cryo detonator. And a cryo detonator. I'm like, I am leaving the candy store. Yep. Like, bags full of candy. You got and the Wonka Yeah, I got the yeah, golden <laughs> fucking ticket. <laughs> I walk outside and I like look at Sister Alexandra. I'm like, look, I'm sorry you had to uh, put up with that sort of that, that sort of dismissal, but um, he's been mighty helpful. Back inside <clears throat> with Victor, there's a flash and the fake wall goes up again, and then he says, "You strike me as one I can make a leap with someone who might be able to take." me further in what I want to achieve. Well, I can share goals with you. The? He clicks his fingers again and there is a vague, gentle hovering sound and a disc-like white object goes and hovers off off a rack that was kind of thing and hovers down with little sensor eyes going all around it, the bottom of it spinning. A little antenna on the top goes, goes up and it's just hovering next to you. Uh, and he says, this is an advanced sensor drone. Advanced sensor drone, you say? It will... And uh, he says, you should perhaps disguise it, throw a rug over it, (laughs) conceal it in some fashion as your imperial technology. But, and he gestures on a um, pad, I can assign it to protect you. Why would you do such a thing? I mean, I am flattered, obviously, but... In exchange for your oath of service... I know this comes as a lot, but I wish for you to help me advance my cause here. What is your cause? My cause is to create a world where man and woman and other can live in harmony, in peace, to pursue their lives, to pursue their dreams and desires, and to excel where all their skills are fostered and flourished and none toil with shackle around their ankle. And what would you have me do in exchange for this gift and this oath? Find others like you, scientists, learned ones, ones unbidden by dogma and superstition, and spread my greater good. Da. And then he says, So there is no illusion. And then his face like twists and shimmers and and the human visage just disappears. And you see the this blue skinned uh Zeno standing before you with a vertical slit in between his head. And he oh. said and then he says Become one amongst the stars. Would Victor have any knowledge of the tower? Uh, <laughs> no. Okay. Jai, you can make a general knowledge challenge level five. Three. Yeah, no. Nope. 
Um, well, this is unexpected, but um, I must say I am liking the sound of it. He says, We appreciate those who are learned and drive towards a brighter future. And we... His, his voice is also still modulated. This isn't what his natural talking voice would sound like. And he says, um, And we wish to expand that. We live in harmony with humans. We've been spreading the word here and amongst other worlds and more people like you are agreeing. The turmoil, the pain of being part of this bloated Imperium is too great. And to join, to become Guia Vesa is to become part of something that means something. Please think about this and go continue your job, scan, find what you need to find and know that you strive towards a bright future rather than wallowing in the grave of a long dead past. And then he nods at you. Uh, He gestures to like this drone blanket. Like it's like a shawl thing you can throw over (coughs) the drone. Just uh, does so and like puts like the scanner very gently on top of it to make it seem like it's almost some sort of like cargo drone. He gestures to a headpiece as well that you can put on that is actually disguised. It already looks like Imperial technology. Sort of like slip it under the... (coughs) And um... And then he he says to the drone uh, he says something that translates to you but you get this weird sense that he wasn't speaking English or or, um, lower gothic for a little bit. And he says what's translated is Camouflage and concealment mode. Activate. And the drone instantly, which is like smoothly hovering, drops two foot until it's just above the ground and goes... And it actually starts like vibrating and shaking. Limp mode. And with the... um. With the thing trolling on it, it like chundles along the ground and it's emanating that sound. And it seems like it's a little tracked thing that's going, it's got like a little lens on the thing and it's like wobbling along the ground like a little human tracked uh, drone that might be following you around. That is impressive. So you hear a voice. Hello, Victor. Hi. Hello. I'm Ace. Hello, Ace. I will be your assistant for the foreseeable future. I have been programmed with codex of your language. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Ace. I look forward to receiving your assistance. Excellent. <laughs> and then you Ace trundle is adorable. out. adorable. <laughs> you trundle out. You were too good for this. There's the little <laughs> drone thing going with you. And as, as Victor approaches, Sister Alexander sees a small uh, make perception check. Yeah, thank you. Ace is too good for this world. He's yeah. going to die. It's going to be the saddest thing that happens. Two successes you've got to beat. Uh, Three successes. Four. There is something very off about this Imperial drone that's chugging along the ground. And it's the fact that it's not leaving any tracks. That, uh, that thing you have is very interesting. That, uh, he said that it was um, free with the, uh, the scanner. He said that it would, um, Did you hold up the scanner? Like no, I've left the scanner like on the drone. Like I assume okay, it'll so you've it. hidden it. Yeah, I've sort of like put cool. it under the cloth because it well, all so. looks like Tau technology. Mm. So it looks it's not mm. Imperial tech, and it's obvious it's not Imperial tech. Yeah, it's just all under. What about that. the detonatory things I have? Yeah, they're not. They're obviously you'd want to hide them and then put them and blow them up, and no one would see them because yeah. only you and Curly ever go, and usually you work alone. Like you go in separate spots. You well, I've known to one. have hidden them when I came out to sister. I'm Alexander. going to have to customize Make a general knowledge check. Challenge level two. That's going to be painful in the soul. No. Okay. So, so no. I walked out. He just has these, these like white. Luckily, as a as an explosive device, they're like a, a bit smaller and less obviously. Mm. But he has these really pristine white explosive charges in his thing. So and I'd start loading them into my pack in case and stuff. So <coughs> reeks of heresy. Don't <laughs> be so close minded. Oh. Uh, he was, he was being helpful, don't worry. He was, he was uh, a very I'm gonna get, individual. <laughs> I'm going to get, uh, get you to make a vocational... Um, you can make a... <laughs> I was going to say, you can make a general knowledge check, you can assist with your sister vocation. Your challenge level is three. Heresy. 
Assist with my vocation. You can assist with your vocation. Challenge level three. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, all right. Two, three. Is I this the assist? This is the assist. Yep. One additional success coming through. This is where journey ends. <laughs> hey, if she couldn't knock out the baby, she's not going to try and take us out. Uh, three. three successes. Four successes. Okay. Um, you know that words such as, hey, be more open-minded are tantamount to heresy. <laughs> <laughs> like, even that is, like, incredibly suspicious. However, your wing of the Sisters of Battle is not one assigned with rooting out heresy. You are a Medicaid. Yes. Yep. But you are still, as an imperial and pious citizen, always keep your eyes out for that sort of behaviour. Sorry. Okay. Um I'm going to put on a very reserved face. I'm basically going to watch you like a hawk. But I turn to you and say, did you get the scanner? Of course we got the scanner. What do you think he's... Fine, then we'll be on our way. I'm just saying that there was... uh, You know that there was something... Maybe stop saying. Word to the wise. And I start... (laughs) Yeah, I follow along. Probably the smartest things you've ever said. (laughs) You head out of town and get in the vehicle. The drone... Uh, at the lip of the vehicle, just is like trundling on, and it just and it like floats up like three foot and floats in when no one's looking. Though I was gonna say because like I would know if Alexandra was watching. Would I know that Alexandra is watching me like a hawk? Should I make a perception? Yeah, I, tell I make you it pretty know. obvious. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like, uh, like if she's doing that, then I, when the drone approaches, I look like I go down to assist it and yeah. pick it up yeah. because he did. Okay, so that's how fine. big is this vehicle? Is, this, is it like the a, drone is like this big? The the vehicle that we're in. Oh, it's it like a big truck. Truck. It's like a Warthog with mm. bit enclosed from Halo. It's Would it enclosed. be possible for me to like sit in the back away yeah, from people watching? in the watching? back seats. Absolutely. Yep. In fact, be- I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this vehicle is like one of those sci-fi things where there, it's like a door to the front two seats. It's almost mm. like an... A- it's not quite, but it's almost like an APC where often like six mm. guys would be in the back with their mining tools and the t- driver and code person would be up the front. I'm going to like open the door for like the sister up the front. We, what is it with every time we play 40k we are all so easily corruptible <laughs> because that's Except what makes Jen. it fun it kind of worked for a while Victor because Victor was like it was, nobody appreciates it's me it's amazing how well that's worked out but anyway nobody appreciates well, me well you know I say well I, I mean interestingly let's see how well it turns out uh, mm-hmm. meanwhile he's going to be in the back doing his damnedest to without being watched too closely uh, imperialify this Tau technology and make it look. Make a. De- I'm going to say it's well, a deception hold on. check. I don't get in the front. Oh. I refuse. Oh. I say you first. <laughs> I will stay in the back. <laughs> Why? It's more comfortable I... up the front. Exactly. I rolled up the front on the way up here. You should ride on the way back. It's mm, only fair. I prefer the back. <laughs> but you just said it's more comfortable. Sit in the front. Children, children, hurry the fuck up. And I start the sure. engine. Okay, so your drone goes in the back and you go in the front because there's no room for it in the front. It's too big. It's like a me- mm. almost a metre across. It's big. I'm not going to touch it or do anything, okay. but the point is that he can't. He can't, yeah. Yep. Mm. All right, so you get in and begin driving towards your destination. Halfway there. <laughs> and then the ground. <laughs> A big, like, wave of dust flows across the vehicle from the direction of the mining site. Oh, my word! How many explosives was oh, your that friend taking me. down there? Oh, Curly. Yeah, right on time. And I sort of tap my watch, assuming that that's mm-hmm. when he's detonating. 20 minutes or so later, you <laughs> get to the site. Uh, the earthquake subsides. And you see the crest of the mining hill, which is, like, quarried into it. And it's snowing heavily. And no one's around immediately, except for Bip. Bip, the Ogren, because he is notoriously terrified of the tunnels. So he he basically ferries stuff in and comes out as quickly as he can. So no matter what's attracted everyone's attention, he's standing out the front. Yep. And you rock up and I get out. I pull up nearby. All right, I'm loading. Hello, Bip. Hmm. <laughs> Is all he just makes that noise and What's going on you. now? Everyone in the mines. <laughs> Boom! 
Yeah, boom, bip. Um, have you seen uh, Archimedes? Yeah, um, tall, uh, com- uh, nice coat. Where's nice coat, man, bip? Make, make a perception check. Uh, so not perception, persuasion. persuasion. One success. One. Okay, good. He understands you. Um, and he says, Boss, look. Boom. All right, boss, look at the boom. Good work, babe. You look after yourself, eh? And as Thump you... Thump him on the shoulder. As you take to walk <laughs> past him, this <laughs> massive hand claps on your shoulder with terrifying power, mm-hmm. but gentleness. But it's it's that thing of no matter how... It's like a bear <laughs> hugging a bear. It's like no matter how nice it is, you still know that he could just kill you in an instant. Mm-hmm. And you also don't trust that he knows that he shouldn't. That's the reason yeah. it's scary is because yeah. he's like an untamed beast. And this hand stops you. And he, he look, he has eyes crinkle in concern and he looks at the sister and looks at you. And turn around, yep. Care. Oh, all right, babe. Scary. Meanwhile, <laughs> at the back of the car... <laughs> Just sort of Take like your drone helps out. it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think the sister knows it's sus, but is just letting it be for now. Yeah. yeah. And Bip gets out of the way, and you can head into the mines. But it was I, I look at Sister Alexandra and say, Care. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss? He drops to his knee as you walk past and bows. Give him a little bow again, <laughs> and we hurry in. I sort of chuckle. You head, head on you head in, you head. You go down the corridors, more twisted. There's dust falling from the roof. It's se- Make an explosives check. For to know. For Bron. Yeah, this is just a, like a, yeah, just make an ex- your expertise Challenge check. level. Uh, challenge level four. One, four two, successes. Three, four. You can see that there are micro fractures all throughout the ceiling caused by explosives. <coughs> the ice has been uh, shattered, but this would not have been caused just by explosives. You are, you're an expert in the field. Mm. Um, you can tell that the explosives have set off a basically a collapse. There's been a much bigger chain reaction than was anticipated, oh, which can happen. No, oh no, oh no. What's wrong? What? Have used too much. Too much? Yeah. Trust Gurley to be heavy-handed. Something's wrong. This is unstable. Unstable, you say? Well, maybe we should see if there's any penals to do the um, explanation for us. What? You're saying you want to go down into an unstable set of caves? Now, do I know if Bip would obey any command he's given? He wouldn't. He doesn't obey commands except from a very few specific people because he okay. doesn't remember who people are. Okay. So he has like facial and name blindness, basically. Yeah. Okay. He, it, he very little capacity to remember things and words even, but he, he so he's kind of lay latched onto like three people who can command him and the sister because you're a reflection of the emperor, basically. I have a bad feeling about this. As do I. That's why I'm saying, do you want to go in there? Well, our command is in there. And Dan he's got to know about what we're doing, and we're on a mission. So, so maybe we should head. To I mission. want to follow orders well, and course. do what the emperor would demand. I'm saying that, but I'm just like, do you want to go in there if it's not safe? Do you believe uh, it's safe? Sorry, um, I'm a fucking space marine. <laughs> do you think I want to go into battle safely? I do my job. Do I look like I a space march marine? March ahead. <laughs> Like, no, you don't. Right. And I just walk in. Exactly you, my you start <laughs> You start driving towards the deeper tunnels. We're that driving. Way. No, no, no. Like uh, driving oh, yeah. as in <laughs> with purpose. Marching. Marching. Yeah. <laughs> I'm holding my space brain knife in one hand and an explosive charge in the other. Every now and then you hear footsteps clattering and echoing across metal, like but running. But every time they like echoing around corners and the, you turn and it's just you hear the like clack, clack, clack of feet running across like the metal gangway planks that are laid down on the ground to stop it getting into a slurry of people frantically moving around. I'm just deciding if I've gone into the deeper tunnels or not because like Victor's like, you said that there was a possible <laughs> I'm like, As you hesitate, seemingly to reflect on your hesitation, which is slightly disconcerting, <clears throat> is your purpose not to scan deep in the tunnels? Is this something only he, only, only he can hear? Yeah, it. Like, I thought people were going to be friends. We are, and, and I will. Like pro- starts walking, and in. I will protect you. That is my assignment. Yeah, it is like it's like God damn it, but you're right. Yeah, 
science and progress comes with many risks, friend. Why do you have to know me so bad? <laughs> <laughs> and you push on. And ha- as you wind down into the deeper tunnels, you get to one of the last areas where people have been living. Um, some of the penals. The penals just have to live in the in the cold caves of here. And you hear a must- muttered, like, whispering. And the sister it drags the sister's attention as you just look into a slightly ajar doorway um, and hear muttered whispers from inside. I'll venture further. You slide the thing mm-hmm. open. You see a penal dropped. They're in, this is their quarters on their knees, hands clasped in front of them, bow, head bowed, whispering uh, a fervent prayer mm-hmm. to the god emperor. And in front of them, you can see silhouetted and slightly obfuscated by them um, a shrine. Okay. And they're like whispering incessantly and clutching and like okay. scra- picking at their hands and scratching and whispering. Looks completely A little just bit normal. of madness to it. Yeah, all right. Um, I'll go up to him. Cool. Then? As you round the corner, I'm going to get you to make a uh, perception check. Mm-hmm. And you can assist with your vocation if you want. Yes, please. We're all going to die, man. <laughs> I think we might. Yeah, I'm, I'm betting. Yeah. Where are I betting, man? Two. Two successes. So, so you, you lose one them. off your thing. So you're kind of blinded by uh, what appears to be sort of faith, which disarms your perception because this is appropriate behaviour. But duty stands out above all. And with your three successes as you round the corner and your eyes just for a moment glance towards the shrine and then back to them, and then suddenly your attention is pulled back to the shrine, you see a visage of the god emperor sitting on his throne, hands holding the arms of the throne, as is acceptable, and his other arms clasped in front of him in thought. I haven't seen this. And for a brief moment, a moment you've heard of a divergent sect of faith that is an unacceptable adherence to the worship of the four-armed emperor. And this is what this shrine represents. It's an emperor with four arms. I'm gonna kick it over. You kick it over. And destroy Mid it. Mid prayer? Yeah. And the, the the penal like falls back, it like scatters back from you in slight fear, scratching at their arms and hands, and you see skin being, <gasps> like as they're scratching, they're literally scratching all the way through their dermis and peeling like sh- scrapes of skin off I, with their fingers. I'm gonna pull out my auto pistol yep. and point it at him and say, what heresy is this? <laughs> and their eyes are twitching and they're kind of bugging out and they're like, hey, father, 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 father is here. Father, father is here. Can we see this? Yeah, yeah, you guys can see over the Shoot shoulder. Shoot him. Father is here. And they calm. They go, father is here. Shoot him. Father. And... I'm going to say you're looking in his eyes. You two, uh, Bron and Victor, make perception checks. Challenge level three. <coughs> oh I'm, I'm reaching for my gun, but it's not there. <laughs> yeah, your gun is not there. One, two, Five three, successes. Holy, I, I uh, critical if that's yearn opinion. for yeah. the days when every attribute contributed to perception. One. One. Okay, so Victor is the only one who notices this. As you're locked eyes with this person, his arms drop to his sides and you look at where he's rent the skin and peeled it off. It almost looks like he's trying to peel his, the skin off his hands and, like, de-glove his hands. Um, <laughs> uh, under his skin is just purple, reflective chitin. Shoot him now! Look at his arm! It just screams it yeah. out. Like- and his arm lashes down at you, and in the split instant, you're in combat. Great. Welcome to combat. Woo-hoo. Okay. He He's got a high you. reflex. Uh, what's your reflex? None. Roll so off. So you're tied. Roll off. Five. You shoot declare him. first. You declare first. I shoot him. You attempt to shoot him. Yep. You are in close quarters immediately. Mm-hmm. You'd pull up your gun. He um, he rushes you. And yeah. He has a charge bonus. Yeah, he does get a charge bonus. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. <laughs> he gets base three and unexpectedly for a penal, he has an attribute, probably something to do with his um, issues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And I'll give him a dice for combat. So there's a word rolling around in my head and my mouth. Three successes. Okay. <sighs> Don't worry, guys. I've got this. I'm the best person oh, yeah, to wield a gun in the world. You're super confident. <laughs> yeah, I yep. got this. That's right. At the end of the day, I can be the full stop on this sentence. Boom! That's I had six dice the back. for my gun, but I don't have it because of... Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're in your hand, at this present moment, at this exact moment, you're about to roll your dice. Your scanner that you're holding, the Xeno one, just starts going... Uh, and it starts to, like, all these things, this, like, beam of light, like a laser array, just goes... Without you touching it, you had no control over it, and just fills out the room, and all these, like, sh- reams of data are, like, pouring down the thing as you roll your dice. Okay, so... My pistol? That doesn't seem good. Six, three, and then... This much red three... Text. Plus, what do you, what do you roll? Can I roll to be involved in combat as well? So or is that base an, three next round plus thing? one and you have no points in it and you have a pistol which gives you... Uh, I'm going to say for this first turn while you're drawing your weapon, he lunges you with surprise that you don't have your weapon bonus. So I'll, I'll be joining combat next round. We well, actually don't get ranged weapon... Yeah, everyone in next round. You don't get ranged weapon bonuses in um, in close combat anyway. But um, but I'm getting... I, the penalty thing's too much, so I'm yeah. just going to take your weapon bonus away. Yep. Two successes. Mm-hmm. So he gets one success mm-hmm. and um, he's going to stagger you. He basically ha- pushes Sister Alexandra up against the wall and begins to choke her with the chain that is holding his arms. Like he pushes his hands up against the wall and it's like, and she's pulling a gun up towards his waist. Your scanner is going absolutely ballistic uh, as I it's getting to data. decipher any of it? Uh, make a... You don't really have a, a... You're all minerals and archaeology. Minerals and archaeology, but yeah. also culture as well. I'm going to say you can Just make a... Just scientist vocation? Yeah, a vocational skill check. So that's including int base three. So that's one, two, three. Yeah, that's all my dice. Ooh, good Ooh. Roll. Oh, good five. five. What was the challenge level? So the challenge level for it uh, would probably be about a four. It's yeah. higher than skilled. What did you get? Like five. 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 <laughs> you see that most of it is written in, it's all written in a different language, but there are visuals. And you can see the visual. It, this is this is insane for you because technology doesn't do this. You just see this like three-dimensional depiction of the person as they're currently standing. And then it just goes like, woof, and like a 3D slicer just cuts through their entire body on the scanner and shows like a, th- like it's just scanning every element of them. And uh, you can see it's like picking up and all these things are detecting uh, elements of their body that are clearly Xenos. And it's it's like, it looks like, I want to say Chevron's locking because we've been watching Stargate, but it looks like it's picking out things like the hands and then it's going like beep, beep, and going green and like pulling that information and into like databases. Of the 3D model. And it's clearly collecting things and rapidly analyzing and trying to determine what the hell it is. I think I'm in love. Um, <laughs> Someone's a towel man. Okay, Bron, Victor. Yeah. What's your reflexes? Nothing. I'm gonna roll Nothing. now. Okay. So, do you remember their rolls? Five. So he's faster still. Yep. You're tied with him, so we'll re- we'll re-roll to determine two and four. So, so you are faster. So you, so you, you declare, declare last. last. So it's Jen, me, Bron, <clears throat> um, him, and then Victor. So uh, Alexander, you what you doing first? So I'm gonna try and shoot him in the gut. Okay. Hello. Just shoot him. Yep. 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 I'm, I lunge up behind him and say something cool like, Feel the might of the Imperium! And knife down into his head. Attempt to? Yep. Yeah, that's my move. Uh, he is going to... Seeing that you're coming to knife down into his head, um, he ducks rapidly under uh, and attempts to, like, knock... He basically tries to dodge your knife uh, and get it to stab into Alexandria. Oh, how's that going to play out in rolls? It'll just be if you roll really yeah, badly, you'll yeah, hit her. Yeah. Um, and, and I might shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this could end very quickly. <laughs> and, and what's Victor do? Alex! Or oh, Ace, sorry. Mm. Analysis is still under operation. Can you kill it? Do not act on faith. It's you don't have the locked data, and it just says that I, you are not in danger. If you say so, I'm just going to continue scanning. Are you? Oh, yeah. I have no gun. Whoa. Okay, so 
if we f- no actually, combat rolls. I will do something. I will look at Bronner and say, if we find. I, actually, I don't know. I'm not going to say anything. I yeah, I don't, I don't think there, there, there's enough in the moment to do the, to yeah, interact. Yeah. Alexandra, combat roll. You've got two dice off. Oh, because of the stagger. Yep. Oh no. Two okay, successes. at least you got two. Three, Three for, for him. him. And Bron. One, two, three, oh, four, five. Yay. Five. Wait, the way that this resolves, if he takes an injury... It, it'll it happen simultaneously. Mm. That makes sense. Now, um, he injures with a level one injury. Can I... My armor? So, yeah, he, ah. he comes down and, like, smashes into you and you take a hit onto your flak. Um, so that's marked one damage off the flak. Yep. Uh, and you don't take any damage. And then you get a level two victory on him. What are you doing with it? Right into the neck. So you're stabbing him. You <laughs> yep. just take an injury on him. Straight in. Yep. Uh, your weapon bites Chitin as it slices into his shoulder and there's plates of, like, insect oil things hidden behind hunched up robes. Uh and the damage seems to be diminished slightly, but he still gets slightly injured as mm-hmm. his armor, his natural oh, armor, takes an effect. Yep. In the end of this round of combat, your device, boop, lock, and it just all, all goes green and then beep, 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 and it, um, it then translates into low gothic and it just says, um, Gorgon, the Gorgon. And then A, A, A says, um, is my intervention required? It will eliminate my stealth. Do it. <laughs> okay. So, Do you require assistance? Uh, uh, <laughs> Ace is faster sorry, than everyone, dude. so he'll declare last. <laughs> sure. The, um, the guy rounds on you. He changes his attention to Bron and starts fighting Bron. Mm-hmm. Um, you're no longer staggered, so mm-hmm. we can all roll combat. What are you doing, Bron? Just fighting him with your knife? Yep, I've got it in, and I go to grab my other hand and just slam it further in, just... Because yep. I've, like, I've got the tooth in there, so I want to bite. All right, he gets two successes. All right. I'm going to use a destiny point to give myself advantage. Boom! One, two... Advantage does nothing. <sighs> But I use a destiny point again. So you have no destiny left. I have no destiny left. All but right, I just but you get a level one victory. Sink it in. This is my space marine moment. Yeah. More than I've ever had. Yeah. All right, sister, four dice. That's what you got, right? Four dice? Yeah, but now that I'm not in. Then why have you got five dice? <laughs> <laughs> oh. One success. Uh, Lucky he's not fighting you. Okay. So... Uh, under my rules for combat, because he's declared he's he's specifically now attacking yep. you. He can defend against you, but he can't hurt you. So he's got two level one injuries now. Yep, two level yep. one injuries. Uh, Victor, you stand in shock as your drone just goes <laughs> up to uh, waist height, and it says, "Step aside." I step aside. <laughs> it, it vocally says, st- "You hear this droning, like this robotic chirpy voice, just chant out and say, step aside, humans.'" Oh, sorry. Should say step aside, Gue La. <laughs> Do we hear that? Yeah, you all hear step aside, Gue La. I sure. sort of more an un in, like I don't quite know what's going on, so I step aside, not knowing I am, as I sort of turn around to see what's yeah. going on. So you do step aside. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I think I'm going to go into hiding very soon. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This thing bursts up with such speed that the rug falls off it. And oh, um, okay. you see this massive, like, circular drone that basically dro- takes up the whole corridor. And from slightly inset, but not fully, these two things just go and drop down. <laughs> and then just... And just, like, an absolute torrent of bullets, of pulsing blue shots just come from both these guns. And with five successes, he got one... Did he get one success or did he get two? I think. If you got two. I think got two successes. Because I got two, then I okay. added one. With five successes, he gets a uh, level three victory, which the barrage of shots combined with his yeah. previous two injuries, he just gets... <laughs> and you see chunks of flesh exploding out of him and he just falls slumped against the shrine as it continues to shoot for another, like, full second. Just... <laughs> and then smoke coming out of the top and then it just goes poof, and drops down to ground level. Just attempts to quickly throw the, the sheet back over okay. like you didn't see it. <laughs> you two definitely saw that. Yeah, I'm like, shh. 
And there's just a smoking corpse on the ground. It's not actually dead. It's technically unconscious, but it's now like, and there's blood oozing from wounds. Meanwhile, it will die. I'm yeah. like half watching that, half analyzing this readout to get yeah. an idea of what the hell is going on. I look from the corpse to the drone to Victor and then to Sister Alexandra. I'm like, we'll get to this later. It's not important. Right now. <laughs> I sort of agree. There's something deeper happening here. Sister Alexander is completely stunned. Mm-hmm. Speaking of deeper, I think this is the heretic sort of stuff we need to deal with right now. Yeah, and Zen will deal with me if there's time for it. <laughs> <laughs> Just a great suggestion. <laughs> Just <laughs> sure. <laughs> Definitely not going to shoot you and run. All right, let's go. And I'll like storm out the door. I kind of like nod and sort of come to my senses, but I don't say anything because this is beyond mm. what <laughs> I have <laughs> ever seen before. Should I roll to like analyze this readout? Because so far, all I've got is Gorgon. Yep. Information's going to be coming to you. It translates uh, to basically Xeno bioform, but most of it's staying in Tau. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not translating. Um, and then it says more information. Re- uh, Ace is like, more information required. One information required, it's dead. It is a uh, database. Hold. Hold. This feels more familiar. This is a subterfuge creature, hive based. This is but a drone. Hive ba- Drone? Hive. These are words I'm not liking. Uh, yeah. I on. thought we might hit the honeypot this morning. Something tells me we've hit a hive. Yes, the problem is I don't think we found bees. I think we found wasps. Do these creatures exist in 40k? What, bees, bees and wasps? And wasps. Yeah. No, 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 you probably never encountered them. You've heard legend of them. Um, <laughs> all right, so do you dive deep. deeper? Yeah, all right. Reluctantly. You push downwards, and for the first time, you actually see a, a dead menial. <laughs> you walk past. Does it have a weapon? It's a menial, so I'm assuming No, that. just dead, gunshot wound. Uh, there's a couple dead by claw. Can I quickly check what colour blood they have? Uh, human, red blood. The red blood? Okay, cool. Okay. You push down into where the mining site was and you see a cavern it's collapsed and inside it's just like this thick purple musculature in this big shape of something that looks like it crashed here a very long time ago. And there's like steam rising off it and the big shape just goes. Do you have those grenades handy? I pull out the- And then you hear a screaming shout, which snaps your attention. There's like gangways and things that can look around. And over in one corner, you see Zukova uh, scre- screaming, um, you bastards! And she's got a shot bat and she's just beating a man's skull into a pulp, a menial. Like, there's just blood and guys. She pulls out her hot shot gun as one of the menials rushes to her, um, like, coming at her, going, uh, for the father, for the father, for the father! And he runs at his, his, like, as he runs, his cowl drops back and there's, like, a few little lumps in his head that look like a strange indent. And she just pulls her gun out. And as she's pulling it up, arcing it, she pulls the trigger and her hotshot gun just slices him vertically in half with a burst of energy. And he just drops in two pieces. Smoke starts coming from her overcharged thing. But she's fighting a half dozen people at once and she will swiftly get overwhelmed. And she's like 100 metres away on another thing. In another area, a couple of guards are protecting uh, what looks to be Agamedes Citra, who is basically trying to get the f- out of there. You see uh, Curly uh, just is stand- Am I going to send Ace in to intervene? Okay, and you rolled a one? That means the Ace is not going to intervene. Ace yeah. is staying with me. Right. And you see Agamedes Citra, uh, who's basically <laughs> getting away. Curly is just standing, like, not that far from you, like five metres of you, just slack-jawed, just looking at this thing that's going... <laughs> and... Up higher, because this is collapsed tunnels and there's all different ways into it. Up higher, you catch the shape of a Magos Explorator, Benomalial, who looks down into the thing um, just as a flap on this lumpy thing goes Mm. and opens. 
and a something massive starts to push out. Of I it, like run birth. at it with my giant like ultra freeze bomb thing. So you're it's, one mile. It's, you have to go. D- you have to run down, and it's going to take you at least like thirty seconds to get there. So yep. you can start to do that. I'm scanning. Yep, cover me! I shout at Sister Alexandra. I pull out my gun. <laughs> so he seems. Um, Curly's just slacked you. This thing's like pushing out. Um, uh, you see the Arc Magos, and for a moment, the Arc Magos locks eyes with you, with Victor. Yep, with Victor. <laughs> do you say? Do you say anything? No, just sort of like stare. Like this isn't good. You have a side arm, Victor. Delay I, them. I had a side arm. This is no time for talking. I must away. I will alert the Magos, the Arc Magos. And he, she turns in a flourish and ignores the situation below and just walks away. Thanks. With haste. <laughs> like she's like, <laughs> like very quickly. Appreciate it. Mm. Meanwhile, I'm just scanning. Yep. Just like, and it goes, and it says ty- Tyranid, etc. Um, and then you hear that Ace's voice that says, does your companion intend on committing suicide? Which one? And you, he, uh, there's a boop, boop, and it gestures, and you can see Vic, uh, Bron running down, like jumps over a rail, running towards this massive shape that's pushing out of this bio construct, holding like a giant mega freeze bomb thing under my hand, like a yep. freaking rugby player. I'm thinking that one means, let's get out of here, Ace, and I'm going to turn and run. You turn and start running. Okay. <laughs> Sister. I'm going to be shooting the thing that's coming out of it. So you're just I shooting the character. Or if there's anything thing. Thing in front of Bron mm-hmm. trying to shoot that So you're down. fighting Xenos now. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Victor's running. Um, this this room is actually open. Ca- it's caved into the sky above. Um, and Ace, as you start to turn and run, Ace just goes, wait. What? Hold on and hovers up, the disguise drops back and just hovers in front of you. What? One mile radius. He will reach it in approximately 18 seconds. You will die. Hold on, now. Hey, hold you on. You grab him, make a grip check. Oh, no. It's wrong. Challenge level two. <laughs> Fail. Do you have any destiny? I have one destiny. I should have predestined. I will spend it anyway. <laughs> Uh, and the drone pushes up and floats and shoots straight like inhibitors basically broken off all thruster jets up with you clinging on and your fingers start to slip off and then starts going horizontally out of the hole and your fingers slip Roll for damage? It catches you. Uh. (sighs) And then in doing so, it like sweeps around, lands underneath you and you catch it and it like, (laughs) like the the impact pushes it further towards the ground. But you've already cleared the site. You're now roughly outside the area um, and, and starts to drop down. And then it says, I am sorry, Victor. I could not protect you. This has affected my... Uh, calculations. We will not escape the radius. Bron. I'm running in. Do I have any sort of comms or connection to anyone I can speak to who's not you in the You can shout. Yeah, no. Nothing. No, no comms. No, not for you. Does uh, Archimedes? You would have seen me just probably. I'm going to roll a destiny roll. Fair enough. <clears throat> not for you. For you, Victor. A five. No. <laughs> That would have been so cool. (laughs) As you crash into the ground right in front of the place and the drone is like half buried in ice as it kind of had to take your weight and and mess up and you like brush yourself off and look down at the drone. Um, The drone says, we have to get this this information to the empire. And it said, I will send a burst to the broker. And you hear a of data like being transferred to the broker. And then halfway, halfway through that stream, in front of you, Ace explodes, splits in half as a massive rebar smashes into it and you turn in shock and you see Bip 
standing there holding the read button. He says, Broke the heresy. <laughs> and just smiles like he's done the real, like a really good thing. Can I see the vehicle from here that we drove in? Bron. <laughs> oh, my word. All right. Yeah. Uh, is uh, Agamedes in there? Has uh, he, oh, someone yeah, I know yeah, he, yeah. who has some sort of comms. Mm-hmm. Um, I shout out as I'm running, sort of turn my head. Use your comms. We're going to get this out to the Imperium. We're not getting out of this cave alive. But by the Emperor, we can get them here and stop these Xenos before they spread their filth. And I'm charging ahead. A guard, uh, a guard shouts down at you who hears you say that and says, The Magos! The Magos has fled to send message! And then um, in front of you, because that was what was happening now is happening simultaneously. In front of you, the beast slides out. It's a long tentacle, like worm like creature with six limbs, scything blades. A guard turns to it, fires a shot, and it just bisects them in a like a offhanded sweep, vomits caustic acid on another. Um, as the penals are operating, and this beast comes out of what you don't know, but is a crashed, escaped hive pod from Hive Fleet Gorgon. And it slithers out and stands up to its full height and then shoots straight past Bron, not even assessing him as a stress, as, as a threat, moving at speed, writhing like a worm, pushing through tunnels and crashing into like the walls of tunnels. What? How does Bron react? As, as he shoots past me? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I know enough about, I'm assuming, like the Imperium and the wars and all this stuff to know that these are Xenos and they're going to spread and... Oh, it's bad juju. Yeah, yeah, you've yeah. never seen anything like we this. We also heard it's horrifying. the information well, as well. as a space marine, there is no more honourable de- death than dying for the Emperor and the Imperium. And I throw the ice explosion thing in the air so it has as much of an arc and radius as mm-hmm. contact as possible and scream like I'd always wished I could scream one day in a moment of glorious death. For the Emperor! And I throw it in the air and detonate. Alexandra, what do you do? I just I keep shooting and I see you throw it in the air and I shoot it a couple of times just you, to make sure. You shoot sure the it, cryo thing? To make sure it goes off, yeah. Destiny roll 15. It throws up in the air, there's for the Emperor. It arcs, a couple of shots ping off it, it hits the ground. It doesn't blow up in the air, it lands on the ground, and for a moment you're like left a little bit. Okay. You hear the poof, 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 poof of the thing. The thing is escaping. And there's a little screen read out on it you had no idea how to operate this explosive but you've done your best but what you didn't know is that it, it's inbuilt with a short timer so it hits the ground and you see together standing there it's like three two running towards the vehicle one. <laughs> one. and um your attention is pulled right as you're running towards the uh you look towards the open cavernous mouth as a massive just tyrannid beast just blah, straight out about to reach there and then poof, the last thing that Victor sees as his irises are frozen in an explosion of ice is this beast as ice seals in around it and freezes it right at the precipice right at the exit of the mine this is, hell yeah it's about how I thought this was going to be but hell yeah <laughs> Dust settles. Oh, 20! We got a destiny of 20. That's so good, that droning. 10 minutes pass. And there's a crack. A sheet of ice. A thin sheet of ice. Cracks. Moves. Falls away. <laughs> Cold. <laughs> As Bip looks down at his slightly, his skin is red from frostburn, but his huge and hulking, right on the radius, his hulking, monstrous uh, form seemed to be sort of resistant to it more than a human. And he turns to Victor, who is also very cold and blind, but not dead. And he picks Victor up under his arm 
and he Who says, says cold and he pats your head softly and says walk you home port yes and then he bridle carries you and Bip, starts, you lovable off. Bip starts walking Victor back to home port that'll take like days yep <laughs> He's not very smart, and he can't drive, and he can't even fit in the car. I mean, I and you're drive. blind. I can drive, but, like, sorry. Um, but I'm blind. And I could drive. Finally, unbeknownst to anyone, in an exploratory crawler that is currently moving away from the area, it is confirmed. Tyranid bioforms on the planet. Send in the Emperor's finest. Send in the Space Marines. <laughs> that was brilliant. Oh my god. <sighs> that was. I'm gonna have to say that's my number one one shot I've ever enjoyed. Aww. That was wow. really that fun. Was, uh, cool. I, I got to say a similar thing, and not just because it's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're slightly biased here, but no, that's biased. fair. That's fair. <laughs> that's awesome. You've done a fantastic job. Your yeah. first one shot. Thank you for yeah, joining well, thank us. You. Thank you. Really for leapt me. into your character, and I, I love deeply so much about it. But I also love how all of our characters just fit so well with what happened even like victor's like weaselly self-serving thing that just perfectly served that story arc yeah, it's like i have um, a reason to live now so Screw good you guys I love it. and i deeply deeply love our patrons Yay. Yes. thank you so much for your support oh my god <laughs> error 404 patron not found <laughs> oh no we better fix that dark fox could you handle that for us please professor x keep doing your thing Tickle Dark, my man. Rain Aya, oh, rain him in. Rain him into the next one shot for us. Earth Angels Tarot. Uh, we need a reading because these guys are in a bad way. Nick, don't forget to stay sick. AJ Macy. <laughs> Last but not least. Like your facey. Keep, keep, keep writing, AJ. Keep uh, and writing. also, this uh, this now uh, marks my new favourite uh, NPC. Who? Bip. You like oh, Bip? Oh, yeah, Bip's Bip. Bip was amazing. Your Bip role play so good wins my heart <laughs> it's incredible you like it's i i you lock and transform every time you speak as bip you literally uh, like become the character it, yeah. yeah i can't i got it it was uh, great that's how that i roll was, I'm, a, I'm a method actor well that brings us to the end of this yeah. part two of our two-parter thank you so much for watching and go check out the battle report if it's out by the time and you watch this patrons maybe now you'll vote for 40k more often i don't know if you like <laughs> it i, I feel like could tell a million stories yeah in this and I kind of want to. And if I survive the next one, we can each play our survivors. Yeah. <laughs> oh, who wants to know what happened to Declan? Yeah, ah. I do. Right. <laughs> See you guys. Bye, Bye.